New settings, then new energy. New We're here. energy, new settings. We're in a new space, uh, and it will be clear why in just a moment. We've decided to break out the the black barrel, <laughs> former sponsored whiskey. Mm, I, no, I had to pay for this. I bought this. Yeah, cash. but that's why I'm not mentioning the name. You see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start the podcast as per usual. Well, I mean, wait, didn't we promise to start with something? Why did we promise to start with that? Um, this is what I would like to propose, Philip. Mm-hmm. So we have a, mm-hmm. a, an excellent interview that we're going to have. Uh-huh, got to after the, the interview, I would like us to live react to the Nama Red Carpet video. <laughs> That's going to be great. Audio. With some great behind the scenes uh, information. And, you know, we have someone who's also at the Nama. You know, you know we actually, we messed it up because the perfect. Oh, no, in fact, we haven't done this theme song. So let's do this theme song. Because we, we did the other theme song a while back, but we haven't done this one. Okay. Granted, she can't hear it. But um, I, I, I'll, I'll do this. Wait, is there a theme song? Oh, there isn't. Maybe. There's just the audio for the trailer. Let's just play the trailer. Wait. I suggest you keep a low profile. This is not good. Wait, get out of there. No, go get him. You know, you know, the cool thing is, it's actually the, the first voice on the trailer is her voice. Oh, wow. Oh. Queen. Hey. I suggest you keep a low profile. Keep a low profile. Keep a low profile. Keep, <laughs> keep a, keep a <laughs> low profile. Let's go again. Whoa. <laughs> 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 These people. We're on another level, Philip. I'm a levels. I'm a levels. Hashtag I'm a levels. We're now, you know, we no longer play with ZBC. We are now at Netflix. Come on now. Give me your 19.99 a month. Yo, those price increases are hurting, bro. Yay! Can you talk to your people, please? Between Netflix and DSTV, they're leaving me broke. Ah. Anyway, um, we're going to start the show as per usual. We want to have some high energy in the room. Um, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. going gonna, gonna to do this so that our guests can hear at least a little bit. We need to get monitors in, in our studio. Dan, if our we top-notch get, if, studio with warm lighting. If we get monitors, how, like, how is that going to work? Explain, explain you, how it's going to work. You keep the monitors below a certain threshold. We put it underneath the table. I can do that right now. I can set it up right now. But it's, it's, what's the point? No, I mean, at least so that we want everyone to get into the vibe, right? Then haven't you seen when, when Mac G does his sound effects, the guests are just sitting there like, what the hell's going on right now? And he's getting hyped. Oh, like, oh, oh, you okay. don't bring up Mac G when we have South African guests. <laughs> this is one of those. Uh... We can just censor his name. No, I mean, I mean, we don't want to get, <laughs> get our guests concerned. Okay, we're going to start. We're going to start now. I have to ask Philip and Mr. Guest. It's not a mystery because obviously by now, Charlene. Yes, they can read the title. I got a question for you. Charlene. Are, are you good to go? Sound of a ding Hey, 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 hey. Get, 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 Let me hear a drum play. <laughs> season settle, season settle the bed podcast hey, in hey, Zimbabwe. Hey, hey, coming hey, to your hey, ear We done brought out a big guest. Every eater. You know how we do, you know how we do. Straight from Cape Town. Speaking of Dan, I was there for a month. Did she call me once? No. Not even call you a single time. I was there for a month as well. What? One. All she said is, I'm in Harare. Why do you sound like a Jamaican Irishman? What's up with that? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Welcome to another episode of Two Broke Twimbles. It's your boy Danny, that guy, aka Danos the Mad Titan, aka Dan Ford Wekumaraini, aka Denimbi, my life, your entertainment, aka I'm down with these streets. Get me onto Netflix and SABC and so on and so on because things are different now. <laughs> AKA Hakuna Moment Danny Mo. That's right, that's right. The only the unmistakable, the irrefutable, the unquestionable, the infallible. You pay your subscriber, Bull Full Child, aka Flame Floss, the Big Boss, baby, aka Fitzapi, aka Sex into Love, aka Filthy Phil, and of course, Why are you so excitable? Like, just, 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 just
<laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Two Broke Twimbo! Dan, you got it. Sorry, you wouldn't have heard this, but there was a big mess going on. <laughs> we'll clean it up in post. We'll clean it up in post. Douglas, remember to clean. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Dan, remember to clean it up in post. That's so funny, bro. It's so funny. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Two Broke Timbles. We're very excited, as you've probably seen by the title of this podcast, that we have a, a special guest, um, and we are we are glad that she's going to be here. We're going to call our Zimbabwean doing it big, even though we've mentioned her before as that. Um, <laughs> Her name is Charlene mm. Chiedza. CC, as I call her, you know what I mean? My, my voice. Yeah. CC. <laughs> Mende. <laughs> AKA Chi Mende. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Chi. Ah, thanks, guys. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> I've been jumping about and screaming and getting so excited because I couldn't hear and I wanted to hear, but I could hear and I can see. Hi. Hi. Welcome. The energy is visible. That's what she said. It's, it's palpable. Mm. Palpable. That's like that. Yeah, I may actually have to take my jersey off because it's. Seeing oh, sounds. You said, I thought you said you were going to do that, Kudara. Yeah, no, but it's, I'm wearing it as a top, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that'll be ox. Yeah. That would be a little awkward for yeah, us. Yeah, that'll be ox. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, Thank you. I think me. I think we're going back to the idea of uh, having a nice long form interview with some guests who have interesting stories. I believe you have a very interesting story, so we're very excited to learn it. Um, there's some claims that I want to address right at the beginning of the podcast, Phil. Hit him up, bro. Hit him up. So Chi um, said, "Hey, I'm a fan of the podcast." I'm like, "Oh, nice. We'd like to get you on the podcast." He's like, "Great. Please send me the questions." I was like, okay, it's, it's very clear. <laughs> it's apparent that you've never listened to a single. No, but something that I mentioned was you guys are really good at improv. So I thought that there's a specific structure because, I, you know, it's also making things in the theater, what, what, you know, there's a, there's Did you a want a format. script? A script. I, I just wanted an energy and a and theme. A, and a director, yeah, and some and producers. The director and me needed to understand mm, what was going on. This ain't curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> no. Nah, we just want to have a conversation. We want to learn your story, mm-hmm. where you come from, where you're going, mm. what's going on in your life, and basically expose you and your thinking to our listeners because we think you got a dope energy. So cool. welcome. Mm. welcome. Thank you so much. I would just like to say thank you for inviting me to my favorite podcast. <laughs> okay, show me your phone. <laughs> and no, show, show me, show me show your, your podcast, podcast app. Show I, your, show, I don't show. know what to, how it's app. You, you don't have a podcast. My phone has to be switched off, remember, because we're in the studio. Mm. Ah. Um, yeah. No, I, I listen to you on Spotify mm. and so, also on your website. Let's on your see. website. Let's You've see. got a website. So yeah, and, show us. And I listen to if you, you show us your browser, if we start My typing, phone is off. if, if I type switch it on, B, it's going to mess up the complete. Uh, acoustics. Um, I just <laughs> actually, before you just shaded me, wanted to say thanks, number one. Mm. I wanted to say I am so proud of you because actually i have actually listened to your podcast and when i do listen to your podcast it makes me so happy and i'm so proud because here we are having my drinks right and one of the podcasts that i used to listen to was another round these two american chicks and now to listen to these two not american dudes but who Mm. can be so many other people and personalities Mm. you make me happy you make Mm. me proud Mm. we're coming we're talking about like coming from outside back inside i love what you're doing inside to the outside mm. and i love you thanks, i love you thanks, for, what she thanks said. for inviting That's us what she well, said. what's your first question you, you're so sister. welcome yeah i know yeah welcome to my show <laughs> so out of interest what's your favorite episode <laughs> my <laughs> favorite episode is the one with shasha the shasha episode i think she just picked a safe person that she assumes there's no way you don't have an episode with shasha i know <laughs> that you say. had a shasha episode and you've had some sad episodes, but today I want to make yours an exciting one. Thank you. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank we look you. forward to it. We thank look you. forward we are, to it. We are on it. We are on it. We are on it. Well, so first of all, if you are unfamiliar with who we're speaking to, Chi Mende is uh, well known in the circles of South African acting, both theater and film. That's uh, correct. Yeah. She is probably, she probably. Just move the, move the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Philip, don't worry. 
Yeah, it was scaring me for a second. Yeah, it's, we are in a different location, you see, because we had to accommodate our guests, so we can't see the normal. Really nice studio, guys. Really love it. Top so, of top again, of the line. How do you feel about the warm lighting? So and the, proud. It's romantic. The dark colors as well. I really mm. love it. And Phil's um, it's like DJ ball there. <laughs> Dig it. Dig it. Can you give me that she, She's shading like a good $6,000 worth of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> It's expensive equipment. I'm really not. I'm so, nice. um, so Chi Mende, of course, I think uh, she's an actor. Act Actually, before I go down this. <laughs> yes. I once called someone an actress and they flipped out on me. Yes, They're Dan. Like, Excuse you. I am an actor. A I'm an actor. Yeah. Thespian. Why must you give me a separate name, an actress? I was like, I just assumed that's what it was. And I proceeded to have um, an unwilling lesson, but one that I appreciated. Mm. That many actors, both male and female, mm. feel that the one word should apply universally. Is that, is that how you feel? Well, I think a lot of people would think of me as an actor because they seem to think that I play both male and female and creatures. So, actor, Whoopi Goldberg says, I've said this before, I'll share it again for those who are appreciating the audio, that an actor is an actress is one who p- performs female stories. An Ooh. actor just performs. Yes. But I think that, you know, as I am a female, I am not offended by the term. I'm, you don't go to a restaurant and call auntie waiter, full stop. So it's okay. I think, you know, these days everyone's got a lot to say, but I am I am very comfortable mm. in my actress. What would you prefer? Persona. Thespian. I think that's a good place because I think mm. it, it it covers everything. Okay. That is true. That is yeah. true. So we have a thespian mm. act. Oh, I refer, refer to myself as a performance artist, an acting person. Mm. We have an acting person. Yeah, that, that is a very that is a very inclusive term. We well, are, we are I, all about inclusivity. Yeah? I would yeah. say performance artist because I don't only act, mm. and I create art that comes from performance on stage. On screen, mm. and I direct for screen, so oh, and I good. hold okay. performances for artists, and mm. not just as an actor. An entertainment doer. How's that? That mm. will also work. Mm. <laughs> We're a, all a about performatist. A performatist. Yeah. Like, good. No, but sometimes she's also directing and producing. But she's she's telling them to perform. So she's in all aspects of performering. Can hmm. we say person of artistry? Mm, but can you paint like Rasta? I really can. <laughs> I really can. I did my own hair this evening. Thank you very much. No, no, no. Not do your hair like Rasta, but paint like Rasta. But granted, a third grader could paint like Rasta, so that's not really a fair comparison. Well, we are speaking about him, so it's whatever he's doing is working. <laughs> anyway, um, so shout yeah. out to artists doing their thing. <laughs> chi Chi as chi a uh, uh, an actor slash actress. Mm. Yes, mm. in in uh, South Africa, she is as you've probably heard from her her full name. She is uh, Zimbabwean, and proudly so. I appreciate that you often mention that you are Zimbabwean in interviews and so on. Um, it helps us find someone we can relate to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I can't avoid it. Yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, <laughs> In preparation for this, I was watching an interview where someone said, you know, your name is like the 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet. Ah, <laughs> yes. Like, yes, Chi. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, 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 on a birth certificate, that's what it says. Yes. <laughs> yeah. In fact, let's start there. Uh-huh. Why are you denying your Zimbabwean roots, my sister? Actually, I became Chi in Zimbabwe in high school, Ku Dominican convent. Okay, once again, that school ruled by the white man. Mm. In <laughs> well, Were you allowed to speak Shona at Dominican convent, my sister? Yeah, okay. Were um, you allowed to have Mabuji. natural hairstyles? Uh, natural hairstyles, you could have 100%. We were before, we were pre braid era. Uh, my cornrows, but, you could relax. But your that's hair, also yes, because, that's that's also because uh, Bonner went there, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but anyway, wonderful <laughs> school nonetheless. <laughs> but. Well, while I was there, we, um, so growing up, so Chiedza was obviously the name that I used and my parents used um, to send me to school and it was my name. Um, Charlene was a slave name mm. and it was also the name that my doctor used. It was just, you know, it was a name that my dad put on the birth certificate first because it was his name. Shout out, Diddy. Um, wait, 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 it was his name? 
Yeah, well, not I mean, his so name that he has. I'm not Ch- Charlene Jr. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was the name that he had chosen for me. And so when he, as the G that he is, went to the ID office, birth certificate space, um, you know, he puts that there. This person has been away from Zimbabwe for, for too long. <laughs> birth certificate, please. <laughs> birth certificate, please. It's a car. Where are you now? <laughs> so when he rolled up, um, he, yeah, so he gave uh, me that name. But so I was cheered. And so people used to call me Chichi. And I knew from very young mm. that I wasn't a Chichi. I, I didn't mm. vibe with Chichi. I've we'll, always we'll, been. We'll get into that. Well, well, we can most certainly. It's just, it's just a very derogatory term. It is indeed. Yeah. I mean, that's why TOK right now aren't able to talk. We can't really play those kind of music. So we don't, we don't like to use that word. Yes. Um, and also, yeah, it just made me feel like a doll and I never felt like a doll. Um, well, like no shade to dolls, <laughs> but <laughs> like, not bashing the doll or anything, but I, I just, it made me feel smaller than I am. And as you see me sitting here, filling up this whole chair, I'm a rather big boned woman. And I always was a big lady and a big baby. So mm-hmm. I, then we read, you know, at Chebe's things fall apart. Mm-hmm. And a Congo would consult his chi in Igbo, the chi muari god. So people started calling me chi, and I was like, mm. "I digs me some chi." Then growing up and feeling the chi of the not the Greek alphabet, but of the Eastern and aligned with the god, I liked mm. not feeling like a doll, but feeling mm. like an energy. So, so once again, you shunned your African roots and spirituality. Actually, if you listened, mm. Phil, a Congo was Nigerian, which mm. is in Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Saka like in the heart and of Yoruba it. And Yoruba and Shona, same, same is what you're saying. Well, you know, we're on the same continent. I and mean, I'm not about that xenophobia, the, brother. Yoruba mm. men, Shona <laughs> men. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, really. It's, what's I mean, the difference? I mean, I'm Yoruba just men is Zimbabwean include. woman. It's just. Well, it's funny. <laughs> when, whenever I introduce myself to people, they're always like, oh, I was expecting a Chinese pe- person. And I always school them about how chi is actually an African word. Mm. And I bring them the Kwanko tale. Mm. Mm. We appreciate you for spreading the word, my sister. Thank mm. you, brother. Thank with, you. With all the all the so called actors that you meet, you know. And can I just tell the people something quickly while we're umming? How I was excited to come to your show, the show that I listened to, um, because of your beautiful voices. And mm. I was like, I can't wait to make love, a vocal love, <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> Because I was just like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so much. And, and, and now I'm going to my cans, guy. But what I'm hearing in the stewed. In the stewed. Was a fave for me. So let go. Oh, so keep, keep in mind, you, you actually have the best mic of us. That's, that's a very expensive Thank you very so, much so it's for capturing, me. It's capturing all the I can way. feel it in my throat. I'm holding mm. my oh cans. Oh my gosh, all the sexual innuendos. I, I'm not comfortable <laughs> right now. It's just. I, Dan, get your mind out of that. Okay, that's a, that's a snippet. I can feel it in my throat. I'm holding my cans. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those who understand voices and audio and radio will understand what we're talking about. So, um, obviously, we're going to get to what people really know you about: uh, generations, Queen Sono, and uh, things, other things that you've worked on. But we would love to start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, you started acting at a very young age. I did. Yeah, in a commercial, actually. So, I guess it wasn't um, so much performance as like long form as I've come to know but it was my first experience in front of the camera and playing and it was in a commercial for Bonita actually it was um <laughs> now giving my age it was a margarine kids in the yeah, early yeah, 90s we remember, we remember it, it, <laughs> was, it was there we, we, it had obviously, the you know, we were a stork household you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Psst, our house was buttercup but you know we appreciated other other yeah, yeah. Mm. others yeah Bonita was the it, it had that like floral thing with, yeah, the, with that, the yellow yeah I, remember. yeah I remember I was too young to remember I was four so mm. I, I don't remember I don't remember the the, the pieces and the, the logos Um, but my mm. uncle was an advertiser saying you wanted someone cute someone who wasn't scared and my mom used to take me to parties with her like i was just i had a little bag when i was four i was just that Mm. gal Mm. and my uncle was like bring her along and i ended up on a bus i ended Mm. up on in uh botanical gardens because we shot the commercial there and then for for buttercup my younger uncle did the you remember the we want buttercup he was a little boy at the end of the table Oh, so nice. it was a family of advertisers and artists, and mm. my uncle gave me my first experience mm. with mm. that game. Did he pay you? 
He did. Mm. I can't tell you where the money is, <laughs> mm. but I am no, grateful no. to my parents sending me to school. Phil, Thanks. You, you can't, when you are below a certain age, there's... <laughs> <laughs> Let me just hold that for you. Let me hold it for Take you. Well done. You did a good job. Um, every, every, for, as someone who, for some reason, consumes so many interviews, um, every, almost every actor um, that I've ever watched interviewed has they've expressed some idea of I tried different things and I tried this and that and that and that. And it, it, it's only when I was in my first drama or my first school play or whatever that I realized that this is what I want to do. And I think that's, a, that's probably a pretty rare thing because for most of us, that's a nerve wracking experience. Yeah. I've got to act, uh, you know, but then every interview I've had is always, I just knew then that this is what I want to do. Did you have that kind of moment? Um, I wouldn't, I'm not sure actually, because I, uh, well, yeah, I, I guess I would say that because when I was younger, I've spoken about this before that I thought that I would study medicine. Um, I just, I, I, I wanted to be there. That's how I felt as a child. And I think it had to do with, I'm very close to my uncles, as you've heard me speak now about family and my dad, I love me, my mans. And that's why I'm here with my brothers and loving them too. Mm. I've just always had such a, I'm just one of those girls who really loves hanging with the dudes. Mm -hmm. And so I had um, an uncle of mine who was, is a doctor who just always used to make me feel awesome. So just quick story. When I was four, I was blind for a few weeks. I patch. Um, mm. For uh, I patch. You heard the iPad story. Oh, we do our research. You really do. Why don't you show our uh, listeners that you can be cross-eyed? Uh, show our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> <laughs> you are Hilaire, Chad. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I hate so, you so much. I think that man, I love you so much. Um, so I think he, um, made me feel really safe and he was the person that, you know, would come and hold my hand. My mom stayed with me, but he'd come hold my hand and talk to me. And I just feel like we were talking about improv earlier, just whatever happened, um, ECD, early childhood development style with the colors and the learning and the feeling came from that and, and from, from him. And, um, so I think I thought that that's where I wanted to be because I liked how that made me feel. And I wanted to make other people feel that way. Um, but so the Zessa has just come back. <laughs> the Zessa come on, just come back. Shout out Zimbabwe. You're, you're a professional actor. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think? I will carry think? on. I'll carry on. Yeah. Um, so while I was in that, I then Jesus was in a loud. grade Yo. six. It's really loud. Sorry, keep going. Do you think? Do you just think? Just appreciating. I was in a grade six play. And... um I was just dancing and playing and doing this thing. And I remember seeing the smile on the, my teacher was Mrs. Robinson. I'll never forget. And just how she was just like in it, our drama teacher. And I'd never felt that I had that impact. On, well, like, I, I knew that people dug me, but I just had never had that pull with anyone before. And I was like, I should try this again. Then went to form one, fast forward to form one science. And I was like, Jack. Ain't nobody in this brain about to do science or medicine or nothing. I'm going to try this acting thing. Mm. And that's how I approached my parents when I was 13 about doing it. And since I was 13, I have been fighting for it and to do it and to be it. Mm. If that answers your question, Dan. It does. It does. Yeah. Uh, so, so what you're saying is you weren't smart enough to be a doctor. So <laughs> you're like... <laughs> I'll have you know, <laughs> right brain intelligence is a special kind of thing, a powerful kind of thing. So the latest studies in neuroscience have actually disproved the left right brain theories, but that's neither here nor there. I, I'm I'm a I'm a little bit just in life. I'm a little bit of a pragmatist, but I, I like to I like to appreciate that. Obviously, everyone has different ways of approaching life and so on. But I some I often think that pretty much anyone could have got into anything depending on the circumstances that you were in or the whatever was going on in your life at that time and whatever. So I always found it interesting that there were people who strongly felt that, yo, like for me, acting was a calling. Cause I don't think accountants think that, you know what I'm saying? I don't think there's an accountant out there who's like, you know what? I balance books for this major company. And I just knew the first time that I held 
or the, the first time that I opened Excel, <laughs> it just called to me and I just knew that, you know, this is my calling. God's plan for me is to add the function and then add some all of the above. Wait, and then, what? What do you think account what do you think accountants do, Dan? Count okay. <laughs> with, with quadratic equations. No, okay. count and polynomial functions. I'm just <laughs> saying, my point is, I don't think um I don't know what else I could think of. Most, probably most occupations, I don't think someone felt like this was a calling or this is something that, this is what I want to do with my life. It's just something that you kind of, you figure out you're good at it or you get to a point like, I kind of enjoy this and I do it. And I've always been surprised that actors always seem so passionate. Like, I just knew that this is what God wanted for me and this is what I got to do with my life. Mm -hmm. So that's why that question was, was very interesting to me. I just want to talk about the accountants quickly and like the spiritual connection to acting and what performance or artistry um, is that I actually feel like sometimes that's why people don't take us so seriously, which is ironic because spirituality is where the people need us to be, where we all need to be. And when you talk about like a calling for the accountant not happening, right? And the calling then happening for me as an actor, I think, I just want to say to the people listening, and I, I feel like, you know, some of the people who are listening are leaning more towards the right than the left um, because of the space that you provide. Right brain, not right wing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, that, Phil. Um, but I'm just here to help you. I'm here to help you. I'm just to, help. to say that... Um, Sometimes it is problematic that the accountant is just thinking, mm. well, no shade to the where you need to be. But I think we are raised to think to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, to be an accountant is what's going to take care of your house. Yeah. But in the same breath, we're raised with Mugenda with church. That's how that house is going to stay standing. Mm. So why then can the spirit of the artist, and as we try to meditate to become better people, to tell better stories, and also to entertain the people to feel as good as we are feeling here with two broke twimbles. <laughs> Sorry, just chuckling about the earlier joke about the man who didn't know the name of your podcast. I just want to say, just a podcast. This was, this was off like before we started recording. In case just you're wondering. to say that um, when Phil spoke about um, it's, it is a difficult space. And I think it's not just like people always like, oh, black parents won't let you become an artist. I know many white folks and Indian folks and Chinese folks. In fact, how many Chinese folk do you know who are acting in Africa? We have Chinese friends. But just my point about that is just that I just want to say to the artists that are listening and the young people that you guys are mentoring and raising through your show and to the parents who listen to you and are trying to push their kids to only do your mm. My point is, please also do your the spirit. I don't, I, obviously I don't say it to mean one is practical and the other one's not. Mm. I just mean it's, it's interesting to me. Wow, view. you're such a good listener. Like how you pulled that out. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> it's interesting to see the two. What you how you pulled that out then? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go home. Focus. Focus. I, I, also, I want to take my jersey off, but now I'm scared that is it. Well, once again, we are. It's really warm in here since the Zessa came back. We pride ourselves in providing a safe environment for black women. Comfortable. We don't want you to feel in any way threatened. You unsafe. Know. Threatened. You know, if you do feel uncomfortable, just let us know and we will adjust accordingly because we are trying to be allies. We can move these microphones <laughs> to the next room if you prefer and you stay here. No, I mean, it's okay. I made it sound like there was nada, but there is something. If you'd like, there's a bathroom or my bedroom available I for made you to it. I'm going to carry on. I didn't want to authentic, so I'm going to carry on. Okay. Do you think? Um, yeah, yeah. So I was saying, I was not trying to imply that um, one is practical and the other is not. Yeah. It was more along the lines of, um, I find it interesting that the approach is for people who are in the arts, especially performing arts, the idea is always, I really wanted to do this. And everything else is kind of like, I just did what was there. And I think, I think really wanting to do something is a better path to take, right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, obviously if you get really successful or you get that break and whatever, then it can be very lucrative. But if you don't get there, it's like struggle city. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the other one is a little bit more safe. But even if you get really good at it, it's not as lucrative as that's how struggle I struggle city. Anyway, um, 
so yeah so you i i heard that you auditioned for generations for six years i auditioned one year then six years later mm. auditioned again See, it wasn't this, every day then, hello then just reads my go, headline go, go, go. it's like okay no. i'm taking a headline I, I believe your exact words were I auditioned for generations for six years. But. Oh, is this what you got in the research? Oh, okay. You got a pizza sold. Go to sell the story. Go to sell the story. I understand. So tell us about the audition process the first time. Six what years. Happened? So every day, every day for six years, right? So, okay. Hello, can I go no, now? No. Hello? No, actually, bef- gonna, wait. Yes, yeah. Okay, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Uh-huh. I don't want to disrespect the work that you did before Generations. Yes, I was just about to say, I'm going to make this one really short because you can go onto YouTube and get this answer. <laughs> but I you know the people are listening. Mm. So we I want mean, to give Dan, them this We need stuff. to go back to the beginning. I'm sure I Stedford was involved some way. Oh, yeah. Of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> that, was about that. That, was, that was my school now. Yes. So, okay, okay before so we get we to Generations, yeah, yeah. let's start with, let's start with, you finished school. You now want to pursue this. Not even that. Let's start with the Interhouse High School, please. <laughs> I want to know which are the top ten because, <laughs> you know, in in high school there 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 are some hits, but you know there are the controversial ones. Obviously, you know, Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, those are the easy ones, you know. But to kill a mockingbird, very controversial. The Great Gatsby, controversial. Where do you stand on that debate for high school's place? The real question, <laughs> the real question that we're asking, yes, in this particular section of the podcast is: yes. Would we make great actors? Because I played Romeo in high school. And I feel I didn't follow my calling. Can you give me a Romeo quote? What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east. And Juliet is the sun. Mm. Look how she plays that. <laughs> Buzz and that. Check a spear. Look how she places that glove upon her cheek. No, no, no. Hand upon that cheek. Oh, I wish I was that glove so that I could touch that cheek. And, and for our students to complete this quote, mm. did my heart love till now? Four. Daggers or dag? Ah. Creep alert. <laughs> Swear at sight. I yes. never saw true beauty until this night. Yes, I remember. And guys, I don't want to be with you. Shame for what I'm going to do. Ah, thanks, yeah. But I don't want to be with you. No, that's why I take off the jersey. It is hot in here. Yeah, sure, thanks, yeah. Sure. Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm blushing, yeah. Sure. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just okay. beside myself, yeah. Okay, sure. back to dance. So, question. in high school... <laughs> Um, you were obviously clearly very fond of the arts and you're pursuing them. I Stedford, GGG, what are some highlights that you remember from when you were in high school mm-hmm. and you were acting? Okay, one was Roald Dahl Cinderella. And um, if anyone's read it, having to like lose your her, her, her garment, the Cinderella's garment, I played Cinderella's garment is pulled off. And underneath it, I was wearing my team swimming costume. Shout out to Black Girls Who Swim. Um, All five of you, we, we respect you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, and like people ask about like my masculine pro- pro- portrayals and performances. So I got to my big shoulders is swimming. So, <laughs> Just wanna say. I actually, I, I have to ask about that because um, well, while I was also doing some research, it came across a lot like, hey, you know, I, I, I played both men and women, this and this, so forth. But when I remember in high school and one of the reasons why they chose Shakespeare is because Shakespeare in originally, all those characters were played by men. Mm-hmm. So the, the counterculture move was now to have women play men in Shakespearean plays. So when I was in high school, we had a number of women playing men and men playing women because... Did you go to a co-ed school? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. oh by yeah, the way, you Because then went to, lots went of single-sex schools, yeah, we were playing male roles because... But but once again, but that that, that would be expected. Un- unless you guys are now going down the road to spaces and just grabbing random well, guys. Well, we did. We were grabbing um, PE and St. George's. Boy, St. George's was our brother's school. Mm. So only in a- at A-level did we then have, thank you, yeah. Dan, uh, brothers um, mixing up with us. But un- until O-level, mm. I played boys a lot because I was tall. I played so highlights, Jesus. I played mm. Jesus, Othello, mm. Ernest from The Importance of Being Ernest. Jesus Christ Superstar? Uh, not Jesus Christ Superstar, just Jesus Christ Full Stop. Or Nativity Play. Nativity Plays. No, it was actually a high school uh, like assembly thing where I had to, it was, it was the first time actually I learned how to use my nerves to create a performance and something to, to connect it to the voice. 
So I was really, really nervous. And like to this day, I still get stage fright. At mm. the Namas, the stage fright was real, friends. Mm. But I've learned how it serves me. They say that if you're not nervous, you don't care. Mm. And your body is not aligned and connected with the ting. Mm. So, so then we don't care about this podcast, clearly. <laughs> because you're yeah, never nervous. <laughs> I think you're also in a really safe space and with a really safe camaraderie. That's mm. really nice. It's yeah. uh, it's the it's the warm colors. It's the, the warm colors. The, and, yeah, and the light, yeah, it's, the it's light the romance that, that you create. It's also the. Mm, she, she got, mm, she's mm, like, mm, I thought your mm, apartment mm, would be nicer. Mm, I really thought it would be like, nicer. You guys sound like you live in a nice place. So. But this is the ghetto. Oh my god! Actually, ghetto. guys, I said to them that it's just lighting wise felt different mm. because they create such a warm, beautiful ambiance when you listen to them. Mm. It is warm. Okay. So let's go back. To, so then the judge said, she said, when she was playing Jesus, she Did used her nerves. She didn't, when you were playing the son of God, you did not turn to God or Son of God for guidance. Well, you I think in the moment, you, you know what you it was. You let so me finish the story. The headmaster said, if you guys don't pay your fees, the son of God will strike you down. Come forth. And then comes. Well, you comes. haven't let me finish the story. Okay, please. But what had happened was mm-hmm. I had to do the, it was the cross scene. And like, I went to a Catholic school mm-hmm. and it was like mass, like last day of school. And I really, my mom used to help me with my props. I have shouted out to my dad. Shout out my mama. Mm. Always. Mm. My mom, to play Othello and Desdemona. She helped me cut up a t shirt and like splutter blood on it to play Jesus. And so I was wearing said t shirt that day. And I was walking with it down the aisle and doing the little walk with the cross. And when I got to the front, walking through the 500 girls down the aisle and seeing the teachers on, the, on either side. Then getting to the front and having to speak, I was just like, how am I going to? And I had to utter the words, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Mm, And I went in performance wise, but also as I was taught in drama by Mrs. Leggett, I had to perform it to the back of the room, to the four squares that were at the top of the wall. Mm. And so in doing that, my voice cracked. (gasps) And I actually started crying because the two mixed and people were like, ah, and And I was like, all right. Yeah, I do. I really did it. Thanks. I'm going to take that one. Those were fake tears. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, no, I did it. And that's how I knew. That was the first time I learned how the two, your own psyche and whatever you need to carry come Mm. together. So that was a major highlight for me. Oh, okay. I also find it interesting that after giving that amazing performance, no one at the school was like, the Holy Spirit really touched oh, her there. I'm sure there were people who were, but now they'll be like, whoa. So, okay. So I'm really interested in how one pursues this professionally. So you finish school. Mm-hmm. Do you, did, did you go to acting school i did indeed and i always speak about um feeling like a little bit of maybe the term is wrong now i'd like to graduate from it i used to call myself an actor snob where i believe that you'd never go to a doctor who didn't go to university so i don't know why Mm. people think that actors shouldn't go to school Mm. um because those are the spaces that then those are the pieces that i could get because at drama school we had psychology as a class. Mm. So if I'm going to break down having played Jesus and there's no space for me to understand what happened to me psychologically, Mm. you need to learn and understand Mm. that. And so that's what I was grateful for. I went to after Cape Town, shout out. And um, it was a wonderful space. And I was lucky because I'd had theater through high school and I felt, and also the Stedfords and spaces like that. I felt that I had done that work and, Actually, coming out of university, I found that those friends that had gone to theater school, I mean, I was lucky to have had the two, were uncomfortable in front of the camera. But mm. I was comfortable because what employed me, what, what, what paid my bills out of university was the theater. Mm. And so because I was comfortable in front of the, the, the stage audience or on the stage, I could start doing that work. And I always say that um, I think the theater is the training ground for an actor, where you run, where you keep fit, because you it's what keeps your brain fit as well. There's no mm. cut on a stage. Mm. I just want to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Mate, we're now accumulating. Phil, stop it. <laughs> you, and, you're doing uh, this on purpose. When I'm air conditioning, I just want to say. <laughs> so, so it's what? She and shade. the matters are accumulating. No, I, I, I was scared. I was trying to be, you know, respectful. Hey, huh? you were. And my brother's song. I wanted to die when I met him. Another side backstory. I am uh, so excited to be here because, uh, yes, guys, I actually am a fan. And when I first spoke to Danny, I was like, oh, my gosh. Um, I never had a chance to speak to such a deep, intellectual, shut man. And he was like, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to all the shut men. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm 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 curious. Uh, drama school acting. It was drama school, theater school. Are those different? Um, I would say drama school and theater school are the same thing because people think of drama as the stage. Yeah. I went to a film school. Film. I was school. lucky okay. to have film and theater as components, mm. as subjects, and as disciplines, as we call them. But yeah, film school in that tone, right? and yeah, yeah, no mm. discipline. 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 Mm. Um, so okay, sorry. I, I, what was the what was the general you and your classmates? Yeah. Did you have a general um, optimism about yo? We're gonna land a movie, or we're gonna land this? I'm gonna be the next. Um, I don't know, Alice in Wonderland or something. Well, one thing I was aware of was that. I think, you know, when you're like, oh, it's a mendigo convent, I got a drama. Like, you're that person and you're in that space by yourself or maybe with other, dr- the drama club, your f- drama the, club the friends. The losers, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think we're pretty all right. I think maybe it was different. Like, thing, I, well, let's be honest. It's, no, it's <laughs> yeah. we were actually G's. We were the cool kids. I mean, come on. Mm. This I is mean, not the cool kids. I mean, come on. Guys. We're I in mean, Zimbabwe. If you can hold it down uh, on stage. It's uh, punishment. You, you, can't be, you can't be bullying someone with the perfect pitch. <laughs> like, give me your money. <laughs> We were the cool kids, is huh? what Imagine I am Glee standing Club bullying by. Imagine you, bro. Fam, you can't go to school the next day. Yo, we're running Guys, we're in Zimbabwe. We you can hold you gotta, you gotta move countries, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's really what disturbing happened? me what that happened? there's a little... prepare. <laughs> no. Guys, maybe you guys were bullied at boys' schools. At girls' schools, people were celebrated for standing on a stage. I was mm. bullied. It really, like, messed up egos. We were just like, <laughs> Boy. <laughs> and then the real world kicked in. You're like, wait a minute. The world doesn't respect drama? <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, I Personally, I can't speak for anyone else. I walked out of there feeling like all I'm going to do is this. Mm-hmm. In fact, it even told my parents. My dad was like, ah, ah, saka toto kuhine, saka kuhine drama. <laughs> and so. Um, so they were supportive. Yeah, no, it was difficult for my dad. I'm not going to lie. But yeah. um. When he realized that earlier you just made a joke about not being smart, but when he <laughs> realized my, I well, didn't have street smarts, I had stage <laughs> smarts. Uh, when he realized Kutimwanoongu has got something that makes her shine, and this is the space that does that, and he could, like, you know, I, I really have a lot of respect for my parents they really just held it down for me and yeah so he was like go and do this thing but to come back to the question we were talking about something specific i wanted to know what the general mindset is in film school drama school theater school whatever it is okay is your plan uh coming from a very from a place of ambition and optimism um, are you thinking I'm going to land that huge gig and that's what you're working towards or what's so the general that's mindset? what I felt at, at drama school talking about like being um, XYZ person at in high school where you think okay this is it and I'm good at it then you go to drama school or film school you're there with the Chieza Mendes of all the schools and I went to an international South African school so there were Zambian kids there were South African kids there were kids coming from Botswana who were all you know th- top th- thanks for their dreams representing thank you yeah. thank you for acknowledging so we you know you then mm-hmm. get to that space and then you're thinking well what am I doing and I was grateful for the library <laughs> that there was now you know material that I could use to go a little bit deeper but it wasn't everyone. I think when we got to that space, it wasn't everyone who then really listened. I, I mentioned having psychology class. It's not everyone who 
I saw taking that on because when I spoke earlier about, I think everyone thinks that this industry or this specific career is play play. There are some people who go into that thinking it will be easy. Mm. That's the first Mm -hmm. time we're confronted by making it a career. Mm. by how hard it is because what i loved about after is it prepares you for the industry from day one so from day one you're auditioning the direct if you're a directing student you're writing a script or you're getting ready to we are working practically from day one so if you don't come ready for an audition you learn that from day one you learn the industry from day one so Mm. for those who were ready for that learning they stayed. And for those who couldn't or didn't, um, you know, it's, they went into other disciplines. Um, but yeah, it was a space that already from there for me, I'll speak only for myself. I can't speak for the minds and psyches of everyone else and what they're going through or went through. But for me from day one, it was like, thank you. Thank you for finally teaching me. I'm Mm. off to find an agent. I'm Mm. off to understand that this is how I'm going to be able to do it. Thank you for teaching me that I need to understand my psychological uh, breakdown and how to debrief and how to take care of myself. Thank you for teaching me, uh, they call them personal habits, the pieces that you use as an actor to trigger emotion, how you can cry on cue, laugh on cue, how to use your breath. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And yeah, with all of that, then I knew well, I felt ready for the industry. Mm-hmm. So, um, just as a side note, as part of the education, did they ever teach you guys like about the legalities of being in the entertainment industry? I have always said I wish that there was like a marketing publicity division in preparing actors for the industry and also money, how to mm. deal with your money, how to... You know, I think those kinds of schools also need an entertainment law division. Um, no. There's not much of that. And mm. so to those building schools, please. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hmm. okay. So, okay. So let's move past school. Mm-hmm. First paying gig. What was that? It was a theater gig mm-hmm. out of university. The end. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not even what were you? What, were, what was it? What were you? Shout out to the play. I was, uh, I, I was in an ensemble. So you feel like you're back at nursery school because even though you're what, 21 or 22, 23, you now feel eight or six because mm. Taming of the Shrew, the lead actor is 50. Mm. And the lead actress is, and you know, it's people who've been in the, in, in the industry. I heard you talk about tongue twisters earlier in Enjoy. that podcast that I listened to that I know. Would you like a glass <laughs> on your of water? Way here. Don't, you, don't you crammed on your way here. Earlier in the industry, you know, mm. people who have been working for, for, for longer. Um, so you're working with senior people 10, 15, 20 years. So when you start, yeah, ensemble vibes, background, paying um, a lady who, I mean, I learned to fire poi. I was in a circus. That was one of my first paying gigs. Firepoint. It's that um, circus thing. I'm just going to demonstrate to Dan and Phil where you kind of like. She is now gyrating her arms in a kung fu fashion. (laughs) It looks like a marshmallow. She looks like she's squeezing. It's like she's about to say Hadouken and then then Hadouken. Oh, okay. She has a good spinner thing with the flower pots. When you take the flower pots and put the string and you put the flower pots on the fire and then you. That was. That was one of my, actually, no, 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 no. That wasn't my first big gig actually was playing Lady Capulet. So I don't know why I went there. Mm. I think it was one of, it was the fire poi was on the biggest stage. The Lady Capulet was with a company of out of university actors and it was a paying gig. Oh, tell me. So you obviously studied both theater Mm -hmm. and film. Yeah. Where was your heart? As I mentioned earlier, the theater is where you need, to, you're not going to expect a uh, regular sane bolt to come to the day without having stretched. Mm. And so I believe the theater is where you stretch. You stretch your vocals, mm. you stretch your mental ability, mm. like, you know, being able to be off script, that sort mm. of thing comes from learning how to hold an audience for hours. 
Whereas mm. with television, we can cut if something goes wrong. And so you work in bursts. With film, the same. But the theater trains your mind in a different way, in, in a tighter way. <laughs> that one was for you, Phil. Okay. Moving um, right along. Uh, Real quick. What's Bonfire? <laughs> oh, um, to my career, it's an improv theater company, but to people who like New Year's Eve or to get rid of waste after spring cleaning, it is a big giant fire where you come together and burn. I am no I know what a bonfire is. I mean your bonfire. <laughs> Theatre improv. Okay. It was an, uh, a theatre improv company that I worked with in Cape Town out of university. And it was actually run by our psychology lecturer from AFTA. And I just loved the psychology classes so much that I just pinned myself to her. And I was like, when I get into the industry, I want to work with you somehow. And I started working with her through Bonfire. And that's why I was commending your abilities to really feel the energy of a space and a person and give them that back mm. and that's mm. the, the, the that space taught me that i mean, I mean you can't you can't you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't training it's it's I like mean, a natural kind of innate, you're like you're born with you know, it it's and just something you sort it of lives within you you know you just mean? kind of like it's like yeah i mean come DNA, on man. Basically. you can't teach greatness it just it's just part of you some people have a thrust upon them <laughs> <laughs> anyway so <laughs> You may continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, so here you are slogging through, I would imagine, theater gigs, pounding it out, <laughs> just day really, day out. just, just <laughs> day and night. Just <laughs> guys, is this episode going to make it? <laughs> to the edit and to the people, uh, we'll push through one way or another. <laughs> So, so what was the first big break? Um, as I would define it or as, as the world as would, define would define it, it theater so, or film? Yeah, uh, no, I think, think career wise, let's just say how you feel at, at this point. So when you've played Lady Capulet, how, how are things bill wise? Like, are, are you living paycheck to paycheck? Are you wondering like, yo. I, I'm on stage, but I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this month, that type um, of thing. Yeah, so there's a little bit of that. There's a little bit of thinking, well, you know, I don't have dependents. This paycheck is okay. Um, I think that was a break because it was connecting to a company that continues to make work for actors. So it was a break into a space, yeah, that employs theater actors. It was at the Artscape in Cape Town. So I got to work on several shows after that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, no, I would celebrate that as a big break because in my mind, when I went to audition for that, I went to audition because I was 22 out of university. I went to audition for Juliet because in my mind, I am a child. I must be playing Juliet. And my agent then calls me and she says, look, I've got good news and I've got bad news. And I was like, okay, start with the bad news. Mm -hmm. And she's like, um, you're not a Juliet, babe. And the director said, <sighs> like, like your, your audition was great, but you you're can be the balcony. Ju- you're mm. not, you're not that good to say you can be the balcony. <laughs> I could you be weave, the, I've got your you gig as the balcony. The, exactly. Like, you know, you're that big tree. boned balcony. <laughs> and, um, she was like, you're not. And I was like, okay, I don't see the silver lining here, but please tell me what is the good news? And she's like, Roy wants to work with you. That was the director. R.I.P. Roy. He passed in December. Oh, no. Legend. Um, she was like, Roy loved your audition. And you need to actually start understanding who you are. And this is something that an actor needs to know. There are casting directors that will make you feel terrible. Because they'll be like, you need to cut your hair. You need to do this. You need that. And then, you know, because it's a physical appearance issue you then feel like there's something wrong with you but they have seen something in you that you can do as an artist that as i thought i was a juliet i was all one seven four centimeters of me thinking that i would play juliet i mean also you know unless we're playing 
a Romeo and Juliet with giants. Why can't we have big Juliets? That's the story for another Speak day. On the queen. That's Speak what I'm on saying. The queen. That's so the story do you think tall we- women don't want to be represented? Mm. Yeah, why should the female tall lead Juliets be- matter, guys? Shout yeah, out to all my tall Juliet. women out there. Hashtag we see big you. Big boned babes. We like, see you. Why should? I mean, uh, we see the bottom of your chin, but we see you still, still. <laughs> the bottom of your chin. But the point is, why should romantic female leads be small? Um, mm. And why should Tom Cruise have to stand on a box? You know. Let's mm. normalize short boyfriends. But anyway. No, no, no. Wait, no, no. We were together. We were together. I mean, I got a divergence. We were together, but look. Got divergence. <laughs> um, so then she said, uh, Roy loved your audition and he'd love to work with you. And I was like, in the future? Oh, no. Today? And she's like, no, as Lady Capulet. And I was like, sorry, um, oh. what? Isn't Lady Capulet like in her 40s? And she's like, that's what I mean. You have a presence and a power. An and old a face. Voice. Mm. <laughs> wow. You're an old soul. <laughs> you, you like those Still, wrinkles. I'll take your old soul. <laughs> Not I'm going to have your old faces. They've been my visuals. Could you let them in? The spider webs so, on your eyes really <laughs> they bring out. The- so like at that point, um, going back to my previous question, like how badly did you need that job or were you good? There's never good coming out of drama okay, Phil, school. Phil, 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 Phil. Here's a Zimbabwean who's mm. going to study drama in Cape Town. Mm-hmm. You think she badly needed a job? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, I mean come on. I mean, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Anyway, uh, please. Hello. <laughs> okay, let's just talk about anyone who comes out of university. Are we not all badly needing the job so that we can yeah. escape no, the nest. Some have bigger allowances than others. Some have bigger allowances than others. But look, I mean, we're not, I mean, we're not trying to... Guys. <laughs> I mean, let's be realistic here, you guys. You just put me in that box very quickly. No, uh, we're not trying no. to put you in a box. No. It's just, it's it's more like a, a, a <laughs> bowl, a dish. It's in a dish. Don't get it. Don't get it. some dish. Can we just let... That water okay. evaporates. Let's move forward. Okay. Yes. I, so I want to know. So here you are, essentially, like you're, like you're describing. You're, you're, maybe not struggling is not the right word. I don't like the idea of struggling artists. It, it makes it, it gives me the idea of disrespect. No, I, I, I'm not trying to paint the picture of a struggling artist. I'm trying to understand like motivation, yeah. because then that then informs or helps you understand the decision you make. Because Throughout this interview, as short as we have been, like you keep going back to like I'm a I'm a bigger woman, I'm a bigger, but you're not my sister, you know. I think the problem is being oh there are those white people in Cape Town. They've given you body dysmorphia. You were just fine the way you are. Thanks, love. L- lovely. But I, 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 am, I am very tall. The two of you are very tall men, mm-hmm. so I'm not tall in your presence. But I have been this height since I was eleven. So when I had to do ballroom dancing in grade seven. Mm. I had to end up dancing with the high school boys. Mm. So the dysmorphia, you are correct in saying that it, it came at an early age where I wanted to do things where my body was told it couldn't occupy those spaces. It mm. needed to. And in fact, I'm grateful for it because that's how I am a lady Capulet. That's how we can do mm. this vocal love because I had to learn that I was bigger than mm. I saw and thought myself to be. Mm. I can't wait to use that line. I'm just, babes. 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 I was, I'm bigger than I thought. Guys, stop it. I can't wait to see the title of this episode. <laughs> no. So, so I think yeah, you, you kind of answered my question because my, my question is ultimately going to be, do you think like if you viewed yourself differently or if you had been treated differently, you might have been less receptive or more receptive to taking Sorry. that role? Because to, to someone else... That, that would be a slight, like, wait a minute, I auditioned to be the young romantic lead. You guys are giving me the role of the angry Mbuya who's trying to keep the child away from her love, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So to some, that might be like, yo, that's messed up. Yeah. But it's sounding like you had already done some sort of in, internal work to realize, you know, actually, that if, if that's what they want me to play, I'm, I'm going to play that and body it. You know what I mean? Just to add to what Phil's saying before you answer, um, I think I, I I understand that to an actor, especially to a not yet established actor, you take what you get, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Whatever role is available to you, you are grateful for it. Yeah. But you have to have done some of the work. Okay. Mm. Is that what you're saying? What you, I just want to 
Help us understand, my sister. I want to pause off the record. Okay, hold on. One minute, 37 seconds later. We are back. We just took a quick uh, bathroom break. Hey. And we are back. <laughs> Make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> so, game. How has Kanye West done more for you than Dr. Do you, do you listen to that interview? I haven't listened. I, I have it on my my bookmarks. <laughs> ah, when it comes to <laughs> Ah, game. Ah. Anyway. Um, so, before we move on, there's yeah. just something while I was in the bathroom. Yeah. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we disclaimer, this interview specifically needs to come with an R18 rating. None of our interviews come with an R18 rating. Hey, Auntie Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Mama na did. Um, okay. What were we just talking about? You were asking me about feeling lucky or the privilege of first time roles or lack thereof. Yeah, and and um, taking certain roles versus others because, as I was saying, like some people might be offended by that. Um, what was your mindset to being offered a role that you didn't want? That some might have taken offense to. Were you disappointed? Or so going back to first time roles, I didn't mention. In mm-hmm. fact, my first acting professional role, you talked about paid gigs. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, they weren't paid gigs, uh, but they were informative. I worked with a young man, an extension of my um, I Stedford work. Um, shout out Simon DeSwat. Who? I know oh, Simon. I know Simon. I know, right? I know Simon. Simon. Yeah. And um, it was private lives. I was playing Amanda, and I had to be on stage and kiss my husband. Mm. I was eighteen, and it was my first time having to be intimate. I mean, it's just a kiss, but as a black, yes, that is the very same one. Wow, Dan. Uh, he just showed Dan. me a picture. I know did, what wait, he hold looks on, like. Hold on. Time out, time out, Dan. When she mentioned him, did you go into your WhatsApp? I was trying to pull like, up his contact. To be then show her that look, he's I in know my him. contact. I actually don't have his name saved. <laughs> I was literally like, I know that name. I know that, and I was, yeah, I was yeah, trying to, I was trying to figure out who it is, and then I found him. Yeah, like, no, oh. it's a special name for me, and it's a um, like a pivotal point was you, in was my your career. first kiss. Oh. He was my first kiss because then, like, I was forever, like, ever, like um, in real life and on stage. Uh, no, 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 not on stage. He was actually <laughs> dating a very close person in my life, and. How um, could you? Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. And he said to me one afternoon at rehearsal, I was like, I am not comfortable kissing. My parents are coming to watch. And that was the first time a director was like, I've got nothing to do with the work. Mm. And that was the first lesson, which is why I think it's problematic. I find, especially as an actor and as a blank woman, where a man will always say to you, oh, how do I know you're not shanking? <laughs> or lying. Uh, just a uh, side note. What insecure men are you dealing with? Most people are faking. <laughs> yes. Um, Even men me. or women. Uh, there's a lot of faking going on in love. But <laughs> also... But Richie, you know, Richie, you know, Richie, you know, like we're talking about acting on a division. She took it by herself. I'm so confused. <laughs> well, I think that the art of performance is a human behavior art. Not me. So, I'm, I'm real as it gets. 100% real raw. <laughs> All right, Dan. Anyway, um, I I think that as real and raw as you are, you are also an incredible actor. You know how to, A, hold space for an audience. You know how to make people feel entertained and loved and that read the human behavior. You know how to tap into how your audience needs to feel. Mm. So... When he said that to me, as an actor, you need to be, it's, it's no longer about you. And it's what's problematic. The reason why I brought up relationships, yes, I went straight to partnerships and coupling and um, insecure humans. Um, I think it's just, I, I've, I've, I said, the first person who ever said that to me, I was like, you're a lawyer. Mm. Your job is to learn how to lie. In fact, if you have not done well in your job, if you are <clears> unsuccessful, <throat> You failed to lie. So now why are you asking me about my lying, which is entertaining people, healing people, taking care of people, where you get baddies to walk free? Like who really is the liar? 
Exactly. Mm. I mean, that's Who's a deep doing the bad work? Question. I mean, Panaba. this is what we do on Two Broke Twin Bows. We, we, we dissect ask, deeper issues and we break this is, down. This is Socrates and Plato were essentially the Broke Twin Bows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because once again, like who, who amongst us is not a liar? Who is not performing to the play that is life? If you are not a liar, does that not make you a liar? Because everyone amongst us is already a liar. And are you lying to yourself about the truth? That you had with him. Hey. Is it better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all? Ratatatata. Is Socrates, what is pious, pious? Because what was Jay-Z's line in that song? When he was quoting, when he, he was quoting different. Oh my goodness, I wish I had it on the tip of my tongue. It would have been perfect here. Anyway, I had another question and I'm just going to divert a little bit away from what we're currently discussing. Even though I haven't yet answered the oh, please, okay, sorry, please. Wow, please. Yeah. Silencing uh, a black woman once again. I, I'm so sorry. I'm I just want to say, even though you guys are broke, Twimbos, you are hella wealthy because your minds are rich. Your spirits are all the mm. flowing Alibaba and the 40 thieves you mm. have stolen me my heart the industry the mm. people listening I just want to say shout out to the wealth that you get we should rename you guys to not so broke <sighs> two bloody rich twimbos because we have to keep the B for the, the yeah. logo the two B yeah. just two bloody no, rich we've been trying to rename ourselves for a while no, yeah. the I, thank you for your wealth mm. Thank you for it, it, the it, space. You didn't see even the most recent post on Facebook. It was like, are you guys even broke? Ha, ha, ha. I was like, okay, buddy. Anyway. Um, yes, sorry. You were, you were finishing. Financially, maybe. But spiritually, mentally, psychologically. No, financially, we're very fine. Very wealthy. No, we are fine. Don't we are very, very fine. Okay. We're fine. Yeah, I'm not fine. Please send money, guys. Um, yeah. Anyway, yes. <laughs> um, yes. So you spoke about, like, you know, uh, choosing roles. So with that... I, it was the first time that I was learning from Simon that I can't, um, I can't always, and I won't always be performing for my parents unless I'm in a school play. And school plays, as we've come to learn, do not pay the bills. Mm. And sometimes people feel like, well, they know you're not compromising your morals. Is this why uh, Hollywood has bad breakups or regular breakups, and people don't have steady relationships, etc.? I think. Um, Phil, you raised a point earlier about um, just the mind and being in a good space mentally and, and doing the work and with your mental awareness on Mondays. Again, so I tell close. you. So close. Uh, you, oh, you're close. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> you're, you're there. You're, 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 we're like on the cusp. <laughs> and then you just sh- banana peel. Skin but, of your teeth. But mental it's fine. health Monday? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go. Diverging okay. a little bit. Anyway, but, you know what I'm talking about. Your awareness and what you guys speak about with that and how you celebrate that. Um, I think it is in any industry. I think as artists, people are left alone. It's why we need managers. The accountant doesn't have the manager. I think we give so much of our souls and we continue to be babies just spewing out whatever it is that we're feeling and we're thinking. And that needs to be held and protected. And we don't have enough conversation around that. So here you go. You are performing something that doesn't necessarily sit well with you. Um, Incorrect, because I had kissed a few frogs. And so now why am I struggling to kiss a few frogs Mm. now in front of my parents? Mm. I'm not performing for my parents. I'm performing for me and the rest of my career. Mm. And so I feel that I have been lucky to have great mentors to answer your question. I've been lucky to, from that point on, I was able to go into spaces with that education to be able to say, okay, well, and then school taught me that because I hadn't gone to school yet. This is why school is important. It taught me that acting one on one never judge the character because the way about Sarako is to mm. educate mm. as you entertain. Mm. So it was educating me too, and that's what I celebrate about my work. And that's where I feel lucky that with that education, I could take it into the rest of everything that came. And I think it, it, it blessed me. And even going into things like 1D, 1D came with um, having cut my hair off. I'd been performing in Cape Town with braids because, you know, when you're away from home. Okay, wait, 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 wait. This is like a whole conversation. This yeah, is a whole yeah, conversation. We, yeah, we, wait, we're, we're about to get there. We're, okay. We're, yeah, but we're, 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 let's put a pin in it. Let's come back. So I think also something you just touched on there. Are you a method actor? Yes, I would say that I am. And I think that's why sometimes it gets a bit overwhelming and scary for people because mm. people are like, but who are you really? Um, but 
looking at artists like Juliette Binoche, people who um, will okay. scratch yeah, themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. and the <laughs> chocolat. She was the lead actress. <laughs> Let me give you another one. Daniel Day Lewis. Ah, uh, yeah, he's one of my Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doogie Howser is Neil Patrick Harris. No. Harris. Daniel Day Lewis was um, Lincoln. He was in Lincoln. He, he was. was he was in something more famous. Was in like any shoot shoot bang bang movies. Um, he was in nine. nine. That was like a sexy one with all the ladies. No, I don't watch no teen movies. My mother wanted me. He was in Gangs of New York. Oh, oh, as the butcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Daniel. Okay, so, so yeah. So, so, so like, Daniel yeah, had a role. Can't remember the name of the film where he had to be in a wheelchair as the character. And on those like I didn't do a finger on set, he stayed in the wheelchair and insisted on being rolled around mm. just so that he could get into. And this is what I've learned with some of my characters. So I had a woman, Dan was present today at this um, ZFM breakfast today, who came up to me and she's like, "Andrew, don't go from Zao." It, okay, let me tell the story. Please allow me to tell the story. Please Chief, do. Okay. Once again, silencing black women. What's wrong oh, with you? No, okay. because, yeah, no, because I under, my best. I understand that she is gonna, she's going to try and be respectful towards mm. this person and not tell the full story. What yeah. happened was, mm. sister, saka pamazam pebe. I was like, she what? also invaded my physical space by tapping me before I then had to demonstrate a physical invasion upon myself by showing her what happened to my breasts. I was, it was, it was very, it was, it was. So wait, did you use binders? I did. I had to. Yeah. And this is going back to the method performance thing. The thing that I got to learn that I could then teach other people that I got to learn that there are. Queer women or trans men, lesbian women who do strap their breasts because earlier I talked about body dysmorphia. Mm. And every I, I, I day. I learned about it in um, Sex Education on Netflix. Okay. Yes, season three. Yeah. Mm. I, haven't wa- I haven't watched it. I'm, I'm a little off watching kids have sex because euphoria. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll get into that in a second. But anyway, please go ahead. That's it will help to know that the actors are of uh, consenting. No, but no, we get like that. But why is there a dick in every scene? Like, why? I think it's also beautiful and natural because we've seen breasts and vaginas for too long. No, I, 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 I for one, this is a digression. We're going to get back to the story. But I, for one, am, I don't mind nudity if it supports the narrative, if it moves the story forward. And you feel it doesn't move the story forward in sex education? It, there are so many scenes. Like when man comes into the toilet to take a shit, is why do we need to see his penis there? When you go even, even, to the bathroom, um, even is that, that not no, no, what no. it looks like? No, no, no. But, no but, we don't need to see. Like, you just got a, 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 a waist-up shot. Even with um, Cassie, the, 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 the woman that plays Cassie on the show. Like, even I felt weird, like, yo. Are we talking about euphoria or sex education? No, euphoria. Sorry, I don't. So there's Zendaya. I don't, haven't watched euphoria. Okay, but it, when you do watch it, there's, a, there's, there's a woman called, there's a, there's a character listen. called Cassie, right? Think, Cassie is like the, the blonde listen, bimbo um, mm-hmm. archetype. Beautiful, very large breast. She's so over-sexualized. Even Sydney, in the show. Sydney. I'm just like... And then I was re- reading Sweeney. up on it. Like, Wait, as part of her negotiations for this season, she had to go to Sam Levins and be like, yo, I need less nudity in this show because you, you're going too ham. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Actually, I, I did want to bring this up with you, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, because you mentioned it earlier, but I, I want you to finish your point now, though. So, yeah, you, you were speaking about per- Which invasion of personal roles, space. And we were talking about method acting. We were talking yes. about invasion of personal space and then binders. And we, got, we deviated. But then if you go back further, we're talking about method acting. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so with that, I then learned about and spoke about it actually in one of my first interviews about how it taught me that something that I do for an hour or even if we said six hours in a day where I went through a lot of pain having my breasts strapped and convincing the world that we were creating this believable character and, you know, shout out to the costume department, shout out to the performers, uh, you know, Tebe. doing the shout work, out to you, um, doing that work. I had to go to that place of, there were days when I did cry because especially mm. when I was on my period, because everything was swollen and I was mm. sore and, Seems you know, sad. trying to play this man who, you know, as, unless you've got a pot belly, when you sit as a man, your legs are spread well, out open. I, and I, I you're like, gendering the character. Isn't the character a woman? 
Th- thank you so much for Becomes your intelligence. W- Guys, we're going to get there. Whoa. Oh, no, Dad. Sorry, she is a woman and she's a woman from birth and day one. Yes. But Dad. I physically to the audience had to be transformed from my female mm. self into a male body mm. in mm. order to teach the lesson of male to female transition. Well, rather a male presenting body, but inside you're still a woman. <laughs> Yet it was coming from a female body. While mm. playing a male presenting body. No, no, no. It's just, no, Dad, we're using, well, the, we're using the wrong the, words. She has ovaries. So she, she contains ovaries. That, we don't define bodies by male and female. It's those by their ovaries and those that don't have ovaries. We need to be inclusive. Speaking of, today is International Women's Day. It is. Shout out to all our women. And trans women are women too. Unless this episode comes out late because it's so long and I'm the one who's editing it. Then we <laughs> recorded this sometime this week. But we did record it just so you know, on International Women's Day where we had a beautiful day. So much pressure on me. Thank you. And thank you for bringing up the, the, mm. the, the presentation of the body and also the actress who played the body. Because they looked at men and women for this role because they obviously wanted... Um, an androgynous frame that could carry both. And shout out to Mfundi Vundla, who was like, I actually, I need a woman to play this role because mm. I need the mind of the woman to carry the emotions of this character. Mm. So what we were discussing was method performance where, so for me, where did I take myself physically for that to be able to represent that? Yes, I was strapped. My hair was cut, but I did forego mm. some grooming in order to feel Ugly in my body. Mm. And not to say, young women, that to have hair on your body is ugly. But where I'd spent nah, many ugly. years being told it was ugly mm. and feeling ugly. And I'm talking about the swimmer. And in my time, I was the only black woman on the, on the swim team. So I was the only one with the curly blacks that was swimming out of the swimming costume. And that made me feel really ugly. I know. Very descriptive. Thank you for that visual. Thank you. You are Thank so you welcome. Thank you. But you know, I didn't come here to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I came here to give you that authenticity. All right, we're, we're here okay, now. Wait, no, so before we go ahead, there, there's something we can't gloss over. So, like in the wardrobe department, because as you said, you're a method actor, so you've got to embody. Because I've also heard you in interviews say, like you, you'd wear the, the clothes of the character, that, yeah. and, and you know, really embody them. So. What's up, when you were getting strapped up, did you pick the size? Like when they were showing you the options, were you like, you know, I need the, the, the large strap? You're speaking of strap ons, yes. sir? Okay. My character okay, never wore guys. a strap on. Well, that's not real method the acting, is it? <laughs> the strapping that I'm referring to is of my breasts. <laughs> that's binding. That's <sighs> binding. Sorry. It was strap material, but a strap on. My character was Ndoku Ekta Kwachu. My I, character had to perform her sexual scenes and I had to make it seem as if I was raised with said appendage. Mm. Um, mm. But the only as if time, he was strapped. As if I was Always strapped. strapped. She got when strapped so yeah. she could act like she was strapped. You know but I saying? had mm. two, thank you, Danny. I had two scenes where I had to show it, uh, where there was a little wait, piece that wait, was... Wait, what type of generations coming on now? That's, yeah, not, that's not no. the generations I remember. No, generations... Actually, Morocco would never just, allow this. It got <laughs> to a very sexy and informative stage. So it wasn't on the screen, but... Um, we alluded to it, like a shot on the boxes where I had to have something that was put into mm. um, my boxes. So I did wear boxes every single day. I wore mm. boxes so that I could sag my pants. So, so that I could boxes feel or boxer tight or loose? Bo- boxes or boxer briefs? I wore boxes. I wore boxes some days, but I wore boxer briefs. So um, I would choice. wear Good my choice. underwear as a girl. So I mm. bought a series of thongs for myself just to feel safe and secure. Mm. Um, and then I mm. would then wear boxer briefs underneath. Uh, specifically, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Those are the ones I really know. <laughs> we as two bro, we as two bro <laughs> endorse Those boxer women. briefs as opposed to just and standard And if, you, if boxes. you're looking for a great pair of boxer briefs, I don't know if the manscape.com use the if you buy the performance package, it not only does it come with the Manscaped lawnmower, <laughs> mm. it brings the boxer brief as well. Exactly. What is your experience with the boxer brief? Actually, Dan, what am I, I, I feel very supported, you know, Dan. Um, my, my bulls have thanked me. 
a great deal. Okay, while we're we're here at Generations, let's talk about it. So you auditioned for it at first, you didn't get it. After six years, none. No, the specific role of one D, I did get. So many years before, I'd audition for something else, just yeah. some gal, mm. and then they looked for this role for a few months, and I was in Cape Town at the time, and I the advantage I had was that I sent a self tape, so I sent multiple takes to show them different emotional gears, and then I did my intro as Chi. So I put the makeup on and I put my dress on and my boobs were out, but I'd strap myself for the audition so they could see where I was coming from and where I could go, oh, but also the where the character was. Is this for was 1D or is this the first? No, 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 it was no. for 1D. Mm. But the first I was in Joburg, did an audition, but no, from Cape Town, the advantage of uh, sending self tapes was that I could cut an episode mm. that was, mm. I mean, an episode of tape that was strapped, p- performing the boy, and then I could then get out of all of that garb and then show them where they could take mm. the beauty. So are you saying somewhere in the world right now, there's a tape of you acting dramatic, almost like, you know, that Tyrese tape when he was auditioning for, for 12 Years a Slave? Can we see it? <laughs> uh, we need to contact Homozo. She has it. Is, what, what, what was the call for? What were they, what were they looking for? In the brief said specifically transgender woman. Um, Whose life is complicated? Well, no, it was uh, Wendele, a young male soccer star who has um, identity issues. Mm. I knew that the character was going to be trans because people were like, eh, why did they get a girl to audition for it? I knew that they wanted to take the character to be female. A lot of mm. people who finally made it to the callback stage knew that. Actually, no, the audition stage, because already that's why I knew to send a f- my female form as an intro. Because I knew that they wanted to see a woman portray this male presence. Mm, I was rather progressive of generation. Yeah, well done. You know, if, if there's one thing, SABC One is always on the cusp of progress. They they got they 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 got they're on the ball. So okay, go ahead. I was gonna say. Well, there's two angles. I think first, um, we can't escape the fact that you're from Zimbabwe. Uh, we know some of the things our, our former president has said. We know what the the general the general attitude. Toward, towards um, others are in yeah. Zimbabwe. Um, what what is the feedback? Is it from family like? Well, where I sometimes feel very open. That was my first conversation with the producers. I was like, "Will I be safe?" And we're talking South Africa, where there's freedom of speech, um, openness to homosexuality, and my personal favorite for female health, um, pro choice. Right. Mm. Um, so. I went to them and I was like, well, I'd be safe. And it was sort of laughed off because people were like, what are you talking about? Because, you know, this is a space that we may not feel safe in. We may not have uh, enough conversations about but where it, the constitution accepts mm. Mm. and embraces the LGBT community. So I was terrified and I felt... Um, it was my first education on South African friends, not really understanding where we come from as Zimbabweans and uh, having to reiterate that not only throughout my career, but throughout my friendships living in South Africa and saying, guys, when we cross the border, let's scrap the xenophobia because let me tell you what we get. Mm. Let me tell you what and why we're here. So I was nervous about it, but I had also grown up in, fortunately, a space where I had queer friends in Zimbabwe. I just wasn't aware that there was a difference. And I think that's a um, shout out to the people who raised me, who never let me see difference um, from black to white, discrimination of any kind. So Your, your parents. My parents, my and teachers, uncles. and my uncles, my aunts, my aunts too, sorry, and auntie. But my the spaces I was raised in, and yeah, I was a drama kid, so I was also watching and reading things that go beyond. And also when I talk about performance, I was sitting in spaces where it wasn't odd for me to, I didn't have to strap my breast for a play at school, but I, I knew how to step into the psyche of something that was different to me, obviously, it wasn't as long-winded as like, well, we have to do a strap, or we have to do this. Well, but understanding that there is difference in the world that I could occupy in my body, and that I had that as a gift. So thinking about what that meant for other people who are living in their difference that's not being embraced. Um, I eventually was lucky to 
perform the work and even in South Africa, like with this auntie today who spoke about my breast, that's in Zimbabwe. The aunties in South Africa would come and in the beginning try and touch my breast. This was because the show had not yet released my identity for the first three months. Um, mm. So people were shocked when they'd see me. Now I find um, in Zimbabwe, people know exactly who I am. Chiedza, Manaskana from XYZ school. Um, but in an essay, there's still a lot of confusion, but not so much that they don't understand what's going on. I think the show did a really good job on educating. So there is confusion. I think I'm interested to see what it would be. I think we've got a little bit of, we've received a little bit of it from seeing men cross dress and then being celebrated, but there's something Shout that happened. Shout out RuPaul, shout out even like with Somizi, it's not necessarily an identity thing, but being able to be effeminate. There's something that I did learn from this process that a female being masculine is problematic for the world at large because the questions come to me, but they're not coming to a man who makes himself fairer because somehow, somehow, that person came from his mother, but a woman didn't come from her father. Whenever people are like, how were you able to play a man? How do you know how to do that? There is no baby in the world that is not half man, half woman. Even if you're adopted, you need the sperm, you need the ovum. So how can I not, if I have my father within my mind, mm. within my body, if I'm not made of my father? And... There's no room to accept the intelligence of a woman going to that space of occupying the patriarchy. Oh, Lord forbid. My sister, occupy these spaces. Let's, let's dismantle mm. that patriarchy. Mm. On this woman's day. Let's Hashtag do breaking can. barriers. Breaking the bias. Mm. Yeah. Um, I do want to, there's so many directions to go with this. So first of all, I want to, I want to, I want to address your method of making sure that you, you did capture. First of all, props that you could go three months with people saying, mm, that's a, ah, look at that man. Oh, yes. Thanks, bestie. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Look at that man. I love him. I love him so much. Yeah. He's a great man. Yeah. Um. So there's two de- the first question I'm going to ask, and this is only because it's a, it's such a, a, um, a trending conversation these days and understandably so. Some people may feel that a trans person should be played by a trans person. Mm-hmm. Have Representation ever, matters. Have you ever faced that criticism or faced that kind of viewpoint? And I have it? indeed, but when I was doing my research, I watched interviews and shows uh, that were conducted by trans women. And one of the, Eddie Redmayne's um, Danish Girl had just come out. Jared Leto had just won the Oscar for Dallas Buyers Club. And this woman said, I'm sick and tired of seeing men represent us because it tells the world that we are men in dresses. Whereas what I learned was like the celebration of what Mfundi gave me to teach the world about that it is women with different body parts. So my understanding was then to teach that a trans woman is a woman with an extended clitoris. Mm. And it took me even to a space of talking in heterosexual spaces of friends, what is the female equivalent of a penis? And people would be like, ah. Uh. A little longer than a few minutes later. So I'd go, so instead of tapping us on the top, okay, yeah. This, this episode is taking a 10. It's taking a 10. No, but this is an educational um, one. That's look, how people um, then got to. Um, I apologize <laughs> that this is where we are. And I know I did promise you that there wouldn't be any more episodes like this. Um, no, but the, the, the kids need to learn, guys. And not just the kids. <laughs> not just the kids. Because it is I'm clear. Really sorry. Here we are with very educated <laughs> beings. From one. <laughs> we have educated yeah, I men. I want to be honest with you. I'm the one who's editing this. I, 
the way the, the way things are standing, I think I, I'm going to have to take this whole section out because it's just a, I appreciate the education. <laughs> But but what then? What but you, 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 a little forward. No, it's like you don't turn on public access. <laughs> turn on <laughs> to watch in-depth description. You know what I mean? Like yeah, mm-hmm. you wouldn't you wouldn't the, turn no, on Cartoon she, Network. They can't see understand. what she was doing with, with her hands. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that makes it but so much I, worse. What can I give it? What can I give you that is user friendly? Yeah, no, 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 what can she no, give no, you? No, okay. My question wasn't necessarily coming from an in-depth sexual education perspective. My question, <laughs> my question was coming more from a direction of: Did you get backlash from people who felt that you were playing the role or playing the character or playing a transgender character that did not offer representation? I think um, when I mentioned that, I heard this woman, this trans woman, saying, "We're sick and tired of men representing us because it teaches the world that we are men in dresses yeah. instead of women with extended clitorises." Um, it taught me about how I was standing for representation because I was playing a woman that is a woman and teaching people about the extension of womanhood. And different kind of hood. And um, (laughs) the other thing was that it felt there were gay men and women that came up to me and they were like, thank you for representing us. And I'd be like, well, I feel like you are speaking the L and the G, but I'm playing the T. And they're like, it doesn't matter. The fact that you we're, are we're even the same alphabet car. gang. Boop, 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 boop. Apart from that, they were just like, your character is starting a conversation that a lot of us who are L or G may not necessarily within ourselves, just as we do as heterosexual people. We don't know, as cis heterosexual people to be specific, we don't know what it is that we like and want um, romantically. Yeah, and so a lot of them would say that you're just creating conversation and education. I can now speak to my father about being X, Y, Z, whatever that is, man or woman, gay or straight. Even there were people who are like, there were straight women who are like, I feel like I am a tomboy and I'm sick and tired of people saying that they think I'm gay, but just because you can come into the world and occupy space with your deep voice, your method acting and your ability to not be afraid to look ugly for the masses, not to say that it was ugly for me to forego the grooming, but to look different to what the world expects of you to be pretty. That already tells me that I have a mentor in you. And so we talk about representation and it did lead to some trans people getting roles because of that. That's what I'm proud of. But until that moment could happen, and what I'm proud of is that I was educated enough, I had enough support, and I, I guess, was androgynous enough and did enough of the work to and go as far as getting my hair cut a certain way and strapping my breasts to look a certain way that I could convince the world that, in fact, I was of a completely different way. I feel like that is as much representation as I could do for myself. And I also speak about just the little girl. When we speak about the actor versus the actress, the feminist, etc., that I was mm. able to speak in a way and be educated by a role that stripped me of my femininity for three months in order to learn some psychological debriefing to come back to myself when we speak about the method. But it stripped me of something that had been a norm my whole life. Oh, you're the big girl. You're going to dance. It took all of that background for me to know why I had to be the big girl who occupies those spaces. It was for me to eventually be big enough to speak for people who weren't as big, who Mm. didn't have the voices and who Mm. didn't have the space. So in a way, I feel, I always say I'm not an authority on trans, but I had enough support from the trans community. I had enough love from the trans community, but I feel like I represented just an otherness, Mm. an other girl and an other boy. And Mm. that felt like some of the work was done. Mm. Did you did you did you watch Generations around about that time? Ah, uh, my, my decoder doesn't pick up yeah. the SAP. Same. I didn't really watch, but I mean, no, I saw some. I saw some course. clips. I, I saw some, some clips clip. on the YouTube. And, and, and once in a while, when I'd visit family on a Saturday morning, you know, in the marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you have the wee stick. I didn't. I didn't even know it was. Hey, it was only late. I was like, ah, 
like exactly that's what i'm saying so i have to give you props and, and 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 it's kind of in reference to something that you did mention i think you mentioned it at when i saw you at nama there's two things so first of all you clearly very convincingly played a man oh by the way you know what we i dan once again you're misgendering the character i'm talking about what she convincingly played i'm not what i had to arrive as but thank you phil for continuing I to go there that. you know once if i'm anything Before i'm, I'm going too far i'm just i'm realizing that perhaps there's some of our listeners who never did watch generations um Maybe we would link to. I'm sure there's a montage. I'm sure there's somewhere. So on a, our guest today, Chi, played a character by the name of Wandile, who was uh, then became Wandi. Mm, okay, one get it one D. one D because she had, to, and now she has a D, but then didn't have. The, she never had the D, but she performed the D. So yeah, so the, I remember it was such a huge deal. And so that, like, you were everywhere, like, oh my gosh, it's a woman who's playing a man. That's what the whole narrative was. Yeah. The narrative was there's a woman who's playing a man. This is crazy. This amazing kind mind of blown. Mind blown. And the, what you said to me at Nama was you were a little, I, I guess, a little peeved or a little annoyed that I'm an actor. That's what I do. Mm. So I can do, I'm doing what I can do. So obviously, you played the role very well. And I would imagine you're a little tired of having the conversation about, oh, wow, you're a woman, but you played a man who was actually not a man, but... This makes no sense. A, a transgender woman transitioning into one D. So, you know, I mean, so I don't want to belabor the point and spend too much time on this. But first of all, kudos to you for applying the lessons that Mrs. Leggett taught you. Thank you, Bestie. Secondly, um, what would you say is the thing that most people didn't get? The whole process biologically of how a trans child is born. That was what I had to learn uh, because people were like, ah, Saka, I don't want gay. And gay is an orientation. Mm. But what I learned and what lots of people are, st- are yet to learn is that a trans child is born in a body that looks like one thing to the world. It's got nothing to do with who you want to sleep with. Let, it's, it's before we even get there. The best way that I learned it was when a friend said to me mentally, we're, what, we're, what we go through with puberty, I'm dealing with my menstrual cycle and having to go shopping with mama or whomever. I accept that as the passage into where I need to be as a woman. And you guys will have whatever socks or sheets so, or uh, things you let, need let, to let, deal let, with. Let, let's put that at ease. Um, we'll put a pen. I, n- I never did the sock thing. I never understood it. That's just nasty. Okay. But the awakening. Wait, what's the sock thing? Uh, wait, well, hold on. Ah. So Are the, you guys you know, talking about what is, I think you're funny, talking about? Yes. She said the sock and then Des is showing off his, 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 his snappy socks. What we the are heck? Dead. You guys are disgusting. No. Dan, this is what, this is what other disgusting men We're do. just talking about male puberty and male awareness. Ew. Yes, yes. The awakening. 1D. Uh, <laughs> J. How could so, you? Going back to what people missed, we, we're all sitting with how could you and eel and blood and juices, right? Whoa! <laughs> Our brains know I haven't it. eaten yet! <laughs> but when you eat tonight, you know exactly which body you're feeding. We're our <laughs> friends. <laughs> Guys, this is such a serious topic. <laughs> this episode has gone off the rails. <laughs> but Russia, Ukraine, what do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> These sanctions, oh my God. Honestly, like, oh my God, Kanye, that was crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but... To, long story short, that's yeah. what I found people, uh, as it is clear in the studio, where it was not only uncomfortable, but completely misunderstood that um, the lesson I had on uh, hormone replacement therapy, as mm-hmm. it's known, HRT for the yes. trans community, yeah. um, is that that becomes your puberty mm. stage. And that can happen 
at 19, at 20, at 30, or at 60, depending on how supported you are in your transition. Mm. But also, um, it becomes, once you start taking your hormones, as our hormones said, I am woman, your hormones said, I am man, it is the time when this child knew something's not balancing for me. My brain does not agree with my organ. And now the therapy of the medication and the hormones now aligns that psychologically as well. Now I feel at peace. Now that burst of hormones we get, as much as we're raging when we as women are pregnant and you guys are raging or heating or whatever, I can't speak for it. I'm not in your I brain. Don't, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Personally, personally, I was doing Bible reading. I, I okay, Saka. Mm, uh, first, exactly first that. 7, that our right. friends don't have that privilege of being able to shy away from Look, what... Look, if you're struggling right now, you can DM me and I'll help you with some scriptures to help you. Mm. True story. If yeah. you're actually struggling, please DM me and I will direct you to some glorious beings who will support you. No, but we actually have resources available. As you know, we do Mental Awareness Mondays dance, as you said. Uh, yeah, that we is have resources one of our here podcasts. In Mental, yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, please, can you share them so that people know? Well, if you listen to our podcast, you would know that we do share them. No, guys, I, speak to us and then we'll forward you to White Love and Thrive. They have a team. Yeah, let's keep it safe. Yes. Once again, we're, we're not therapists, we're professionals. No one send us uh, any private information. Send that to the medical professionals. We'll direct you to them and we'll give you free counseling. That's what we do. You know, every month we're, we're paying well, for therapy for people. Every Monday. This, this past month, we need we need. You yeah, know. guys, things are bad. <laughs> uh, things are bad. I haven't paid rent yet because, hey... Okay, so 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 um, another uh, another. But wait, before you before you continue, what what, what 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 I, what I have been doing ask for the last four questions. Uh huh. Are there questions that have uh, not to do with generation? I've done no, all no, the work. Guys. No, I, no, we're gonna get there. But I, I'm I'm very intrigued to know, um, and I think it's very important, especially as you said, because there are Zimbabweans struggling with various identities and orientations who can't who don't feel safe coming out, right? Yeah. Who yeah. don't feel safe being who they are. I'm asking you because you are from a unique position where even your family knew who you were as a person, right? But that doesn't shield them from the social stigma of going okay, to church. Well, or, or, let me finish. Ooh, ooh, well, wait, yeah, before, before, going? before you continue with this, I just want to make a distinction. An actor plays a role. Yeah, I was just about to say people are going to think that I'm trans. No, no, no. Nothing no, no. But, to, but, wrong but, with that. But, 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 but I as, think what Phil, let's let Phil, okay. Phil finish his Please question. Ahead, but so the reason why I'm asking that and to respond to what you're saying is the example that you had this morning is, is, is a, it, it's, it's an offshoot of that. It's to a lesser degree. Yeah. But general viewers have a very difficult time between separating the character mm-hmm. from the actor. Mm-hmm. Right. So in as much as, yes, you are playing a character, people know who you are. It doesn't divorce or shield, like I said, people in Zim, particularly your family, from that social stigma. Because there's two layers to it. The first layer being, why is your child playing someone from that community? Because there's a stigma there. Mm. And secondly, is she part or supportive of that community? Mm. Explain, because people mm. cannot remove themselves from the character. Mm-hmm. So... In as in, 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 in as much as there was a um a level of distance, as you said, because you were playing a character, I don't I am interested to find out if there was any social blowback. And if so, how did your parents respond? Were they supportive? Or were they like, yo, it's the block is getting hot over here? Or uh, or even if they confided in you. Like, was there any blowback in Zimbabwe to people that knew you? In fact, this is where I'm so proud of Zimbabwe. As an actor, Zimbabweans were more interested in my personal life, but nothing to do with the sexual social stigma that came with playing that character and that comes with that community, which speaks to how much more we need to create these spaces. No one, like I remember one guy at an event going, Saga, it's not easy to get easy. And I think he is one of 5,000 people who was like just totally ignorant. But most people were in celebration. They were, it almost felt like a lot of, like my parents, when I spoke to my parents, my dad was like, oh, I don't really know what this all means. I'm just proud of you and the role and getting the work. That Being on that platform obviously was a huge deal and everyone was proud of me. 
Um, I think a lot of people, when we speak about Zimbabweans and where they go with their education and how, excuse me, that came through that people were like, I just want to, when people come to me, they want to, they're doing exactly what you guys are doing, Mm. asking the questions, not discriminating. I was really proud of that. Mm. There was a lot more of that than there was any confusion or hate. Mm, Okay. Well done, Zimbabwe. Mm. Okay, Dan, please ask your question now. I've now forgotten what I was going to Dan, say. wake up. Mm. <laughs> that, what were we talking about? We were Bandile. talking about my career and career. moving on to other characters. Oh, yes. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, I think a fear of many an actor is being typecast. Yeah. Um, was that a fear that you entertained? Yeah, um, one of the first roles I was offered after this was a lesbian in a prison, and I think people could only see me as mm. Butch. Orange is the new black. Um, mm. Yes, yes, um, um, and you just actually hit that nail on the head. Um, but something that I also felt was like people always put me in spaces of authority, which was then moving on. My Queen Sonor role, where I was mm. a young woman who was probably too young to not only play the role, but the character was young to be in that position as director general. Um, I was again told about my authority, but my the, but presence. the old face, you know, yeah, <laughs> my dope face. Um, I mean, Damn. She, you know, when I see Welcome, you, do not know I think of, ladies I think and of gentlemen, the Zimbabwean Viola Davis. I you know am I mean? the director I general. I that. <laughs> Phil, thank you so much. Zimbabwe and Viola Davis, yeah. Um, and being reminded of that little girl who had to be told that she's actually not 22. She can hold face, yes. She no, can you do the have. 40. I know you're teasing. It's okay. Receive it. You're my best friend. People don't know this. This is where people are going to learn it in this mm. podcast. Danny and I have been friends now for... Month, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, hours, hours. <laughs> It's actually been since lockdown 2020. Mm. It was reminding him. That's when I started listening to the podcast. <laughs> Mosquito. But um, that it, it, it did. I felt that there was a typecasting. When you talk about like choosing roles, I think um, it's not just in Africa. I think as a young actor, you do struggle with that. You can't just go around going, I want this. I want that. I want that. Recently, I was offered a role. Where I was like, okay, do I need to send an audition or send a tape? And they're like, girl, mm. the role is yours if you want it. Mm. And to the body of work, work speaks for itself. Thank you, sir. Reputation precedes you. Thank you, another audition sir. Audition for who? And it's it's when you get to those spaces, Phil, you also spoke about like just the work. I think you spoke about this off air. The work that you do internally as well. Why psychology was a big part. To be sure that Uno Jiziva. Oprah said this. Are we on four hours? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oprah said this, that you need to know who you are before you arrive at fame, before you step into that space. And it's actually, I mean, Mama O gave us something, but until the day we die, we don't know ourselves. Mm. We are working towards it, but you've got to be doing the work is how I would rephrase Mama O's quote. When you step into that, you've got to be doing the work. And I think some of the work that I was doing, the university facilitated and allowed me to, when I also was lucky enough to have good supporters and agents and management Mm. uh, where I was offered this role and people were like, no, sorry, you can't do it for X, Y, Z reasons and contractual reasons where you were Pachaco, you're like, oh no, you're sabotaging my career. They knew what they wanted you to step into. Mm. And I've been lucky to have that. And so when I didn't go into the prisoner role, I was free to go into the director general role, which allowed the world to see me now just as a boss babe, um, Mm. as opposed to a struggling identity child. Mm. And that then led to now this new role that I'm going to play, this girl that I've been offered. Mm. It's got nothing to do Mm. with sexuality, but definitely mental stuff Mm. and psychology. Are you giving us the exclusive? Exclusive, 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 exclusive. exclusive. (laughs) I cannot share exactly what it is, but it is another Netflix role. Uh, mm-hmm. Those Netflix checks are nice, huh? Um, 
<laughs> no, but actually, we know it. Queen Sono was, co- was was co- Queen Sono commissioned or did they buy the, the rights? Our uh, Queen Sono was the original, first African original. So, ah, so Netflix, they commissioned it. It was. So you direct. Nice. It was family. Saga, saga every six months, family you need a nice little direct Netflix deposit. Trip. Well, no, no, no. Uh, unfortunately, this There's is where no we residuals. need to do better as an African industry, understanding royalties and 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 shout out to those who are taking care of us and coming into our spaces to do work. But the reason why people must join unions mm. and why we must respect the arts industry is because we need more voices to stand for the checks that we deserve. Indeed, indeed. Amen. I mean, amen. Yeah. That's, that's, that's amen. what we're all about here, you know. We're here to empower the African creatives. Yeah, that's yeah, what we, yeah. that's what, something that we are passionate about, whether it be music or film, mm. drama, film, whatever yeah, it is. Film, film, film whatever it is. Um, <laughs> well, sound effect. <laughs> while, we're, while we're on the Queen Sono conversation, um, yeah. Netflix seems to have an interest, or they, they seem to have realized the, the, potential value in not just making American content, but like each different region has its own potential. Like you can make African content. Right now we saw the success of obviously what was South Korean. Queen Sono itself was successful. Blood and Water was successful. There's there's things that happen in Africa that are successful. Yeah. Um what do you think or, or rather what is your opinion on an American company? coming to Africa. And I hope this is not jeopardizing. Wow. Dan, what is it? Hey, Dan, we're, we're <laughs> this is right. okay, I'm okay, trying to make me I'm not wait, get the checks. Wait, wait. I'm, 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 I am but let's emancipate ourselves. I'm, with, I'm withdrawing that question and I'm going to rephrase it. Because <laughs> I just realized this might be putting you in a compromising situation. Okay. My question is really, what can local producers, movie houses, um, directors do to ensure that their quality of work is at the level of Netflix's? That's not really the question I wanted to ask. But anyway. Ask the question you wanted to ask and let's okay, hear it. The, the real question let's I'm trying good, to ask is... Let's see how good the uh, press training is. Let's go. <clears throat> my, my, question, my, my question is, we appreciate that Netflix is paying attention to, to, to African content. But Netflix is not an African company. Mm -mm. How do you feel about an American company profiting off of African work? And do you think in the long term this benefits African creatives and the African creative space? Or is it better for us to try and figure out how we can make and sell our own work? That is a very difficult question, and it is difficult because it is actually quite political. Yeah, that's, that's why um, I would But I will answer it simply with this. Thank you to the first world for seeing the third world. It is, however, now the responsibility of our third world leaders to take heed and understand that our industry needs their support. I'll leave it at that, because we can't Mm. do it without them. That's good, that's good, that's good. good. We can't do it without them. I'll I'll give it a B plus, I'll give it a B plus. No, no, absolutely, you know. Because they're the people who are helping with the trading. Mm. So, please can... So, me asking that question doesn't mean I think that Netflix shouldn't be here. Not at all. I am actually happy. We are so grateful because people can see what we're capable of. Mm. In fact, when we did Queen Sono, I was asked a question about, how do you feel about Netflix coming in? And I was like, because of working in Cape Town, where we have the advantage of working on things like Homeland, Mad Dogs, international films that are being shot in um, South Africa. And this, by the way, has been happening since the 70s. We've been working on international projects that are shot all over the world because it is cheaper. Uh, I said with Netflix, however, the difference is that now I needed to, as a child growing up, dreaming about Hollywood, to get onto a plane to be seen internationally. Mm. Now Hollywood has come to my backyard. They got on the plane to come to you. Mm. And they just switched on their TVs in yeah. 90 countries. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, I, I don't mean that I, I think Netflix shouldn't be. I'm absolutely happy that Companies like Netflix or even 
even if we're talking Hollywood as a whole or whatever the case is, see the value and the benefit of being here. Yeah. I have no issues with that at all. The only thing is I want that to kind of be a, um, I don't know, a shot on the arm or whatever it is to push local. Because if the rest of the world cares about the story of a thriller in South Africa, then surely South Africa should care about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Surely the whole of Africa should care about that. Yeah. So why aren't we then, we should be in a space where we're creating that thriller or we're creating that, that whatever it is, rom-com or whatever. And it goes back to how the industry is not supported. It's, it's yeah. where we are pushing, like we see with South Africa, how culturally and with the arts, there is support there. They're sending the David Tlalles and the fashion designers to Milan and supporting that space. But, you know, apart from musicians, who do we say in Zimbabwe of our artists are supported in that, in the same way who get to go on a plane. And it's, I think it's because it's, it's, it is so instant and it is uh, quicker and easier money. The musician is that personality. He or she writes that work and you can transport that one person. Whereas with a production, a film production, it's several people and a producer's idea and a writer's idea and a whole team don't forsake that as well. You, It's just as important. And I think part of the problem is it's not being given that celebration and that value. And people are turning on their TVs to watch us. And if they understood that they need to put money into it for it to become ours, mm. then... Honorable Kesti Coventry. Yeah, I, and we sp you spoke to her. I did speak to her. I did speak to her. I, I must, I will admit, I was very tempted to go down certain routes. I was like, no, this is on national TV. Let but me. not only not, not to only Kirsty, they're, they're, they're it's, right? Yeah, They were like waiting, right? Just, you know, no, it's I, not only to our honorable Coventry. Uh, she comes from, she is a student who has a headmaster. It's our headmasters mm. and it's the board of headmasters, the chairperson of the African headmasters. It's those guys. It's there Passion is not Java enough. Is basically who we're talking to and we want. <laughs> so yes, Panganai, please <laughs> invest in the art. Pangston. Okay. Please put on your seatbelt because I'm doing a quick jackknife turn. All right, cool. and, Click. Uh, I want to, I kind of want to go into, uh, back into the discussion about, you now as a seasoned actor, you've done multiple roles, theater, film. I want to know what rituals, what... A little bit of context. Earlier today, after our breakfast, I was going back to work, but some other people were like, hey, let's go, Queen of Arts, have a couple of drinks. And then she says, no, actually, I have an interview later, so I'm not going to have any drinks. Mm. Professional. Professional. I was like, oh, wow. It's, it's, it's great to see that this, the interview she takes seriously, she makes sure she's alcohol free. <laughs> Absolutely, because you know alcohol clearly impairs judgment and leads to a an all over the place kind of. She's, she's like, no one is going to hear this podcast. <laughs> Give me those shots. <laughs> it was a thing, Wendy. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Um, but what? What are? Uh, do you have any like rituals or um, whether it's a culture or a thing that you do or whatever to prepare mm. yourself? Um, I did sort of notice you preparing in before your Nama, um, when you went out to present an award. What did you see me do? I mean, you just seemed to be in like a... a she, she, also not, a, she also had a killer with her. Did you see that killer, man? That, that yeah, man, yeah, that man she, looks she, like she's a hey, body. Hey, my man. My Shout man. Out, I'm on your team, buddy. Shout out. I, I, my man was working out with a banana. <laughs> he was going to step you with a banana, bro. <laughs> no. Do you have any things that you do to get yourself ready, whether it's acting... Um, appearing in public, emceeing, whatever the case is. I'm going to start by asking what it was that you saw me do at the Namas. I just saw you in a corner, in a distance. Before I went onto stage or Be sitting at my table? Shortly before you, went, before you were, when We're you left up. your table. Yeah. You it looked like you were psyching up to go on stage. Mm. And it was a good When I walked past you guys. No, no, no. no you were outside. I don't know where you, like. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I know uh, what you're talking about yes. when I was walking up and down. Yes. Um... I do like to make sure that I have a space of meditation before I go into the work. I um, will make use of my script learning, absorbing, memorizing abilities as 
you noted I, I didn't I don't like to go onto the stage with mm. a piece of paper or mnemonic devices, you know. Mm. My very earnest mother just sent me nine pizzas. It's the solar system. Mercury, Venus. I was like, what's mm-hmm. <laughs> Vele? <laughs> but yes, I mean, and she gave a performance. I, I noticed, like, she was very confident. She was like, tonight at the Namas, we honor the theater. Did not say it like that, but anyway. No, but, uh, but like, a lot of people had good words, you know? I yeah. mean, I was impressed. You did your thing. thing. As opposed to the guy before, like, hey, Napsa, Napsa, I'm finished. Napsa, Napsa. What a f- there was just there was a part that will edit out. <laughs> but um, so there was an important <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I I do I um. <laughs> So I just hit the, I just the created a button. mark. No, just a mark. So that I know <laughs> okay. to come back here. <laughs> For editing purposes. Yes. Rituals, <laughs> things that you do to get yourself ready to be in the public. Yeah. Hour. Um. So again, going back to drama school, Um. like I was talking about our vocal space. I, I do celebrate what vocal artistry has brought to my career. So there'll always be a little bit of a, a warm up as we did earlier. What was it that we were singing, Dan, just before we started? Just to warm up our voices. You know, Phil went. Take it, Phil. <laughs> So, yeah, I always make sure that the voice is prepared. You know, we spoke about um, I had some fruit when I came in, but I wanted to make sure that I had water. I, you know, as far as I can mentally, I will need some some silence before I go into the space um, with certain characters, whatever that character needs physically. I will hold on to it. I'm quite precious about precious. I'm quite precious about <laughs> I'm quite precious about props and costume. I it's a sacred space for me. So when people think that it's all play play and people want to go to the insecure spaces of are oh, you just lying to me? Um it is my work, friends. As much as you need to make sure that you've read your notes as a lawyer or you know your patient as a doctor. Or you've done your research as a dope ass DJ, radio disc jockey, or you stretched before you Ronaldoed. I think we need to use a different. Athlete. Yeah, because that that that, yeah, that, that, recently, that would be very. It doesn't okay. really. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, I mean, especially on Women's Day, it's just yeah. Yeah. No. Let's let's work right, with a different. You made sure that your arm was strong enough before your grand slammed Serena Williams. Once again, that sounds the, the angle that you're going with. This doesn't really hit. Okay. The, uh, but we can, we can, No, it's fine. It's fine. We yeah, understand I mean, we, what we, you're it's trying to say. It's, it's All right. That you made sure. Ish, the one that I had was a little political. Um, no, it's fine. I mean, I think we get the gist. We get. I think we understand yes, what you're yeah, saying. Let's yeah. move forward. You know, yeah. don't take our spaces for granted. I mm. make sure. Yes, I make sure that there's stillness where I don't find myself to be. And this is the thing: when people think I'm lying, you've met me, and those who know me have met me. Mm. I am gregarious. I am. Oh, okay, Google <laughs> Google. Okay, G R E. I'm. I'm. I'm a person o- fond of company. Uh, uh, is that what Gregarious is giving you? Is that what Greg is short for? Of animals living in flocks. Or uh, organized did you spell Gregarious correctly? Okay, wait. What were you trying to say? All right. I was just trying to speak. How many, how many ways did they spell Gregarious? G-R-E. There's one way. What is the definition? And what is the definition, Dan? Fond, please read it first. Referring to a person. Mm-hmm. Fond of company or sociable. Or, or social? Sociable. 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 Okay, yeah. so in that sociability, I think there is um, an extrovertedness about that gregarious character. Googler. Googler. 
extrovert. Extrovert. Oh, no man, yeah. and, and, and is very like. Or someone goes outside, alright, yeah, yeah. Not an yeah, introvert. And then the and then the bands out of their own skin, mm. ah. and so even out of my own skin, people then think that I don't know how to live within. Mm. Mm. But because you took the psychology class, you were intro. Spective. Yeah, so extroverted but introspective. Yes. Mm. Fele. Mm. Wanna so, sing okay. your song? Next right now. question. Going again. Re- <laughs> yes. Your seatbelt was not even on. I um, clicked earlier. It's still on. Um, you were part of an improv crew in yeah. your in your early years, and you clearly still have an, a great appreciation for improv. She said. Something. She said we were really good at improv. You know, Dan. You know, what, Dan. We're gonna be fun for the the podcast listeners. Let's do a little round of whose line is it anyway. Let's do some, no, some improv. Are we no, gonna no, are we I, gonna round up because we've been here for wait, forty hours? Yeah, let's let's wait. round up with some. Are some we improv? rounding up no. with an improv game? Let me ask my question. We're not okay. playing an improv game. I just we are. To ask, after the question. With your experience in improv, what yeah. is the one most important skill to have to be good at improv? Don't ever be afraid to say yes. Mm, it's a rule. Then it's, it's always yes and yes and in improv. No is a blocker mm. in life. Just always be able to go, 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 whatever. Yes, but it is. I disagree. Ah, <laughs> but no buts. <laughs> always go with the yes. It's always yes and then. I think those are people that Fungo would say my actors to no pinga because we say yes to everything. Did, did, you, did you have a whose line is it anyway scenario for us? Yes, let's play scenes from a hat. Can we take another break before the <laughs> scenes from a hat? <laughs> sure. Five minutes later. Welcome back to Two Broke Trimbos and our special improv game hosted by Chi. Chi is going to direct us, Dan, and we're going to have to play along. So, Chi, over to you. What are we playing today? Um, so, uh, this is a game that I like to play where I go deep within the psyche of the people just to see where they're at and what mm. they're feeling. Mm. And I will perform a poem for you. Mm. Based on pieces that you give to me. No, oh, wait, but is this oh, funny? Is this funny oh, improv wait. or sad improv? We're on funny improv. Uh, it could be funny depending on what angle and direction it heads to, and if I am successful. So, what would you like from us in terms of input? So, it's like a word association game. I love it. Mm. Don't oh, yeah. overthink. Mm-hmm. And so, I'm going to go to each one mm. with the following. Give me the first. So, just clear your clear your minds and sit in the space that we're in right now. How we have been, what the day has been, where you're feeling, what you're feeling. Side note to the audience, the men have their eyes closed and they're taking deep breaths. Dan, what is the first color that comes to your mind? Lilac. Yes, sir. Phil? Yes. Uh, What's the first color? Don't overthink it. Purple. Okay, cool. (laughs) First, don't overthink it again. It's got to do with what's in the moment. First, emotion, Dan. Hunger. Phil, first. Exactly. Is, is, uh, exci- excited. Anxiety. Anxiety. Also, hunger is not is an emotion. Is hunger an emotion? Dan, this, we'll this, use this hunger This is how limited Dan's <laughs> scope of emotions is. He thinks hunger is an emotion. But emotional depth of a teaspoon, guys. I will, I will, I will, I will use, because the next one is word. I'll use hunger as your word. Can you give me an emotion now? Is anxiety an emotion? Okay. Mm. Don't overthink it. How are you feeling? Excited. What is your word? Preponderous. Eh, so. Tisre or Google? Do you even remember what, what are the colors? Lilac, purple, anxiety, excitement, hunger, and preponderance. Preponderance, a superiority in weight, power, important, or strength. Okay, can I see the word, please? <laughs> Like Can I have the language of origin? <laughs> Preponderous. Okay, pre of pondering. Please use it in a, a sentence. Superiority in weight, power, importance, or strength. Eh? Mm, mm-hmm. I want to see you drop okay, it so in the next. So we have preponderous. Next Netflix episode. We have hunger. Those are our words. Mm. We have lilac and purple, and we have anxiety and excitement. Mm. So this is what I then do. Okay. Please take this before I, I break it. Um, it's an iPad. (laughs) 
Okay, so. <laughs> so then I then close my eyes and I sit with what you gave me and I create a poem for you that is this is what came out of bonfire where what I feel I just did was to in closing take what your day gave you just what came out immediately Mm. and I will sing to you Words that you've given to me, preponderous, excited, hunger, anxiety, purple and lilac, Mm. and give back to you what you are feeling, holding, carrying. Mm. And what I sense is what I am gifting to you. Mm. All right. So... I'm a magical being, majestic fear. I sit in my lilac field. A purple is me, cause I'm royalty. Preponderous in my superiority. Amen. But there are days when I'm not me, and I'm filled with so much anxiety. I'm wrecked and I am wrecked. I'm alone and I'm a mess. But if you just see I'm an excited being Hungry Needing your soul to feed My energy My purple being Cause remember friends I said I'm majesty Magical being, magic being, magnetic thing is my chi chi sitting with feel, uh, feeling my deal. I'm here forever. Excited. Gonna doubt, always be shouting my superior. So you, you can't hear it, but we're making loud sound effects here. <laughs> I, I feel that that was, that was more just for her to show off. That was really a game. <laughs> I didn't feel... Did you feel... Did you, it you really you wasn't. Know, this like, it was this, this me like, blessing you with what you gave to me. I don't me. feel like we this had is like, this, is like, this is like when someone invites you to the house. Guys, come over to my house to take my PlayStation and there's only one controller and you just spend the whole time just watching him play. <laughs> We're like, thanks, that was fun. It's like, I know it wasn't. You guys should come next week. I'm okay. so tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's that Dumbo Tumbo one. Nah, 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 nah. All right, well, so then since it's your show, not my show. No, nah, I, I think it's fine. It's can we close it with a game from you? No, no, no. no, I, no, no. I, I would love for us to close it with positivity. Mm, positive vibes. We want to grow. We want to figure out what's next. Once so we're pushing P. Something you've alluded to several times in this conversation is your interest in producing and directing. Yeah. 
do you have any plans that you are keen to share as to what you will be doing going forward? Well, I am currently sitting in your home in Zimbabwe, Harare, Zimbabwe, because I came home four months ago to work on a film here. Uh, I am acting in it and I have earned myself a sweet producer credit and trying to raise it to the next level where we're talking about how the people need to see our things on the we didn't even discuss Outside. that. I mean, that's a it's, it's a study studied cast. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying what what's coming up. What can we expect from mm, you? Tell us, so, tell us about this program. Just <laughs> say, program. just say Hello. something about this movie. How nice, Dan. Um, it is my hello back to the um, country. It is a rom com. Mm. It's more of a bro rom com actually. Mm. Um, it tackles. Uh, male friendship um, and celebrating brothers who are trying to help each other find love. And my mm-hmm. character is the oldest sister to one of the bros. Shout out Sean Munda. Mm-hmm. Um, who Sean, plays my AKA brother. Achilles. Mm. Yes, Achilles. Um, and so working on that, it is set to come out later this year. And then I will be back again to work on another Zimbabwean film. In July. So back here, just meeting the people, experiencing the artists. It was lovely to be at the Namas uh, a couple of weeks ago and just reconnecting with mm, touch and base. Evil. Mm, I mean, I mean, you got to reconnect the motherland. with the ancestors. The now, motherland. Just, you, you know what I'm touch saying? That soil. Because, you know, South Africa is not really Africa. Nah, I mean. Mm, you got to connect back to the motherland. Especially Cape Town. Like, she, she, she <laughs> chose the most American part. Well, guys, I actually have lived in Johannesburg for six years. That's currently where I'm best. I'm just going back to Wow. Pepper. So, Dan, all the yeah. time, Dan, how often am I in Johannesburg? Multiple times. Not once has you been like, yo, you're my city. What's up? You know what I mean? Let me show you around. Nah. I know well, all the I spots. Well, I didn't know that you were coming in. Clearly, you didn't know I was in Johannesburg. I mean, he, so mentions, he, he mentions it a lot on the podcast if you were really If you, if you listen to the podcast, you'd yeah. be aware that I travel often so, to Johannesburg. You know. I mean, anyway, look, I, I mean, this, I mean, is, I mean, this no, is not a witch hunt. No, yeah. this, is, this is not an interrogation of sorts, you know. I so, mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, ah, we, we we take our there listeners. There were no cheese damaged in the recording of <laughs> whether this Whether they are interview. fair, whether they're listeners or consistent actual listeners, you know, we, we take them one and all. Fire. One last thing that we haven't touched on. I feel like we've really spoken a lot about your career, but one thing we haven't really spoken a lot about is your voiceover career. He? It is very interesting to me because I also am a fledgling voiceover artist. I was a <laughs> even, even me, Sean, even me. Hi, hey, yeah. hey guys, would you like to buy in some soap? Go huh? to pick and pay now. <laughs> well, actually, we should ask your listeners to where we we're talking earlier about what kind of animated character you should look like or would look like as an animal or a human or an alien. But please send manatee. through your thoughts. Manatee. I feel I feel manatee. Manatee. Send through because your thoughts. Because I have a plethora of voices, okay? And I can delve into many characters. And really embody this. Guys, performance artist is clearly the mm. theme of this episode. Hajina Marie so my okay. question was... <laughs> yes, Uncle D. Stop it, Phil. <laughs> my question was... Specific, I'm not talking about like commercial adverts and whatever. I'm talking about like... Voicing animations, for example, or documentaries or whatever the case is. Yeah. Do I need to get film, theater, et cetera, training to be able to excel in that field? I have often thought about that. I think it helps to have uh, theater training because of lung and breath control capacity and I control. Have great lung control. Um, how quickly can you work a 60 or 90 second if you need it to? Because I think it's... Firstly, I always say to people, read, 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 read as many scripts as possible, because I think people always think it's just going into a booth and doing something with your voice. But mm. you will struggle with like, and then I want to sell. Mm. Uh, Especially then, 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 then puts his sir. finger under the words when he reads. To be honest, <laughs> that the reason I get most of my gigs, I mean, I think I have a fairly good voice, but I know a lot of voiceover artists who have incredible voices for like voiceover work. Mm. And... I think a lot of times the reason I will get a job over them is, especially if it's a long job, is because they're like, 
at least you can read so yeah. just no, you just come in you just got to get yeah just to have the skill is not enough which is why i keep going back to school 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 and school comes with the reading and the training and the discipline mm. yeah that i mean that wasn't really for the podcast you guys get to hear that but me it was me just asking for advice because right over marimba papa my voice over no but i did i did a voice over for a documentary and i loved it it was about it was about a family of wild dogs that was living in a part of i can't remember somewhere in i think it was konare show or maybe it was wangi i don't know I can't remember it was so long ago. Wangi. And then I was told that, no, 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 this is great. Here's your payment. We'll let you know when the thing is out. I was like, I can't wait. I mean, you guys don't even want to watch this thing. And I still haven't received it. I like a message. Has it come out? I messaged Ross. It was, I recorded it Ross. I was like, hey, Ross. I was like, mm, he's like, my knows. man, I don't know. They, they commissioned me. We did the voice. I sent the voice and I completely, like, I'm done. How so long were you in studio for? I was in the studio for uh, maybe a good hour or something. Uh, you got I worked on a documentary where I started smacking my head because I was like running out of oxygen. I'd been in the studio for four hours. Mm. I mean, so, it, was, it, it wasn't a long, it was like flex a, on them, queen. It was, flex like, it was on. like, it was like, a, I think, I feel like it was like a 15 minute script or something. So anyway, one, five, five, zero, one, five. Yeah, yeah. It was wow. a short, it was like a yeah. short, uh, dude, that was a documentary. That was an advert. No, no, it was a documentary. 15 about minute it. script. That's a vignette. That's, maybe that, maybe it was like let me say twenty you, minutes. You know, you, you know, like when you're watching the movie channel and it was the a movie, YouTube short. And the movie ends early, and they got to fill that time until the next movie starts. That's what you are doing. <laughs> still, still, I want to see it, man. Guys, please can we play a game before I go? Oh gosh! Okay, but based okay. on your ideas, uh, Danny promised me a game, so I was waiting for it. Wow, Dan, what game did you promise us? On the microphone, tell us what game was this? What game did I promise? I don't know. You said it would be exciting, and I shouldn't. I said it would be exciting. That doesn't mean there's going to be a game. Okay. You said that we will play. All right, let's play a word association game. Okay. So we can get to understand you better. Okay. Cool. Mm. All right. You know, actually, yeah. Let, 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 let's do like what Nori does. Mm. Eminem bust the rhymes. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear what <laughs> language you were speaking. What are you saying? I think you said talks. Eminem or Buster Rhymes. That's how okay, talks. Eminem. Nah, you gotta take a shot. Make some noise. Beep, 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 beep. Am I taking a shot because I didn't no, give you the no, answer no, you wanted? No, no. Oh, oh, she doesn't get. She doesn't want to drink. No, okay, no. I don't it's know nonsense. what this it's game nonsense. is. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. We're gonna play a word association. Okay, game. I, I, like I just my... want you to say the first thing that's in your mind, not a word, mm. your thought, mm. your whatever is in your head. Okay. Mm. So we made a reference earlier to Beyonce. So Beyonce. Hate this game. <laughs> taking too long. Taking too I long. I always make mistakes in this game. There's no mistakes. Okay, we just want to understand what you're saying. Taking too long. Um, blonde. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I always attention my... beehive. Attention <laughs> beehive. Okay. SABC one. <laughs> ETV. Emmanuel. ZBC. Power FM. P O W E R F M and Titch Mataz and Simon Parkinson. And they may not have been there, but just former they, they starters. Were, were Good morning, over. Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> They've just got sound effects. <laughs> I hate this game. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hit me. HBO. Truth. Netflix. Gross. Pearl Tusi. Fire. Kuva beverages. <laughs> Delight. And that concludes our word association <laughs> game, guys. Uh, so, Chi, if people... <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if people want to get hold of you on the <laughs> socials, where can they find you? <laughs> Savagery <laughs> upon the two of you. What is that? Danny said, a pox on you. <laughs> anyway. If people want to get hold of you, where can they find you at the social? I mean, we went to the Kuva um, after party. It was great. It was great. It was drink. Great time. Yeah, we had great champagne. Yeah, shout out to Daryl, my man. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. Shout out. Shout out to. Shout out to the girl who went to offer drinks somewhere and said, hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. And the person, some, the person responded by saying, yes, I know. I saw your name in my husband's phone. Oh. <gasps> Mm. Oh yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> it did happen. It was very awkward. I wasn't at this party. What uh, happened? Uh, <laughs> uh, 
There were so many things happening. So many things happening. Sure. Anyway, so um, in conclusion, uh, mm. people can find me on the gram at chi underscore mende. Please, not mendez. Mm. Mende, M-H-E-N-D-E. Uh, the real chi mende on Facebook. A uh, little mm. bit of a story. There is a man who is masquerading as chi mende with mm. almost a million followers on Facebook. It's not me. Please don't go to wow. his auditions. A million. Almost a million. Fo- He's got more followers than I do. Please don't go Can, to you, him. Clearly you bad. Bad. Oh, oh, did. It's a case with the police. Ain't oh. nobody oh, trying oh, to do. at Mark Zuckerberger. Tell him what's up. I have. Uh, Mark, please do something. Many reports have been sent. Um, I would like to assist you with your social media. We can discuss after this. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. <laughs> truly. Truly. And then on uh, Twitter, I'm sorry, I'm not a tweeter, a big tweeter, but um, apparently we're going to do Twitter spaces. Who's apparently guys? who we? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Us. Yeah, that's part so of let me lo- let me let you know. Someone, a, a, a third party that's not us was like, yeah, you're going to do Twitter spaces with Dan and Phil on Two Work Twimbos. So I was like, oh, I mean, we're not against it, but you know. Wait, who's the third party? I won't tell you, don't worry. No, I'll, I'll mark it. Who, who is it? It doesn't Ooh, matter, I'll tell you. Just that off air. Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We're doing a Twitter space, apparently. Okay. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. It Anytime. was an absolute pleasure. Thank pleasure. you so much for your voices, for your awareness, for your wealth. Mm. For you two wealthy twimbos. Mm. Thank you for your hearts. Thank you for your beauty. Thank you for the heat that was in the stewed, the energy that was in the stewed. And thank you for holding space for mm. Artists. That's what we do. We actually let black women occupy. Yeah, no, I was. This is is actually yours. This is not a submissive act. It is a gratitudinal act. Mm. Mm. For those who cannot see right now, she was on her knees while Mm. she was Uh, doing the clapping motion. And then she she got wearing a a whole Zambia. She got me a bowl of water to wash my hands. It was really, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Thank you, Chi. Um, this was a yeah. great interview. Love your responses to a lot of the questions that we had. I love how you think about things. This is mm. great. And hopefully now after this, you'll be inspired to actually listen to an episode of the podcast. We would appreciate oh. that. <laughs> sure. Thank you so much, guys. I mean, we had promised other things in this episode, but at this ah, point. Guys, it's a bumper harvest. I mean, we'll, we'll catch up next week. Yeah, yeah, just go to yeah. YouTube, check out uh, uh, your boys were recently featured in a Nama video, uh, the red carpet moments yeah, highlights. Yeah, I was also there. Yeah. No. She, she didn't come to the, no, red, she carpet. She the promised, red carpet. We asked you specifically. And you, she turned us down. She left us high and dry. Dead. I'm high says, and Chi, dry. We are going to have problems. Please come to the red carpet so we can interview you. And you were like, nah. Forget y'all. You guys are nothing. You guys are nothing. I, I actually said you. I was going to be there. I just had a slight delay. And did you, it's like, you know, that BMT had hit me. Mm. Um, but mm. your girl showed up at the end. Mm. She was there for y'all. Mm. By that time, the red carpet was threadbare. Mm. But anyway, we moved. Uh, it, was, it was more of a, of a light beige. Like a pinkish <laughs> carpet. Um, after all the footsteps um, But yeah Go check it out on YouTube You can go to the Namas page uh, If you want to find out more information Of course it's on our so- On our social media platforms It's difficult to post a link On Instagram Unless it's on the bio So go to Twitter No or- We've got the everything link The reason why we have that Is because I can just easily add A link That is true Yeah we, we, yeah, yeah, we got the unified link Yeah so you can go Check out the unified link It, it, it will be in the show notes Of this episode uh, so please, yeah, follow Chi, follow her career, follow what the the things that she is mm-hmm, in. Mm-hmm. She has told us off the record some of the exciting things that she's working on that she can't big speak about. Big things are going, big things so are going. Just, shout out just, to you. Just stream Queen Sona and then make sure your Netflix subscriptions are paid. That's all yeah. And, uh, and yeah, as for us, please continue to subscribe to Two Broke Twimbos. We appreciate those of you who would like to uh, show your support financially. You can go to uh, Patreon or twobroketwimbos.com forward slash donate where you can sign up to the Patreon or make a once-off donation. We would appreciate it either way. It pays for, you know, stuff. And um, if you can't support us financially, we still appreciate your presence. All you could, all you have to do is just share the podcast, drop a comment, just drop a like. I mean, that's not difficult. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we appreciate you. Drop a comment, uh, tweet about us, Facebook about us. We appreciate it. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, actually, got a shout out, shout out to Munya who gave us a five star review on the podcast this morning. He says, I've listened to and loved all episodes t- since 2019. You hear that, Chi? Since 2019. When True I met you and started listening the to the podcast. True fans. Mm, people that actually listen. Next week, I'll be a guest presenter. I mean, 
<laughs> shout out to Christine Kicks who was super excited about us discussing we'll, geopolitics. We'll down and shout, shout out to another five star review from Nana three six one five who says, "Guys, only just discovered you, and I'm so glad. I live in Germany and love the connections I get through your part to home. Mm. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Guten Morgen, Nana." <laughs> Shout out to all our new listeners If this is your first time joining us This is what we do We interview some notable figures With interesting mindsets That we like to invite But most of the time We talk about whatever's on our mind as well So yeah So join us Subscribe uh, Be with us And we can have a good time Mm. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to A new listener But anyway I've lost the message So it's fine Shout out to our new listeners overall Yeah yeah We love you guys so much And please don't forget guys uh, Support the podcast Because we need it Uh, Tubeoctombers.com Forward slash donate or head on over to manscaped.com, get yourself a performance package 4.0, and use code 2BT at checkout for 20% off and free delivery. Are we still... I love you. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> oh, wait, no, okay. Yeah, manscaped.com, 2BT at checkout. You know how we do. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Chi, shout out to you, incredible guest, and we will catch you on the next one. We out. Yeah. <laughs>